some things set up here for today's stream, tonight's stream. Janet from another planet will not be on. She is battling her allergies right now. So you get El Brucio. Chat on Sun, how you doing, buddy? Also, I just dropped a link in the uh, Discord for us if you want in. Okay. Of course, whenever I uh, whenever I start to do something, my internet's like, "What you you need? Oh, yeah. Let let's fuck you over." Chat on Sun says, "Bummer. Uh, it's doing pretty good." Sick Nation Thirty One Kings. Everybody, uh, even in folks, are here. Janet has it. It's going around. <laughs> We're doing pretty good over here. Shadow, go ahead. Finish up with dinner. Parrothead, hey, how you doing, sir? Busy tonight, sir? Staying warm and out of the little bit of snow we got here in Southwest Potato Land. Ooh. I remember driving through Idaho. It was nice. The people of Idaho are great. All right. So, hopefully everybody had a, a great weekend. The holiday weekends for me are pretty come and go. I mean, it's nice to see family. Love them. With family, it's interesting because you, you love, you, you find out you love coming home more. I, I don't have a problem with you. I just really like the feeling of going home. <laughs> uh, so. Uh, let's 
Somebody messed with my... No, nobody messed with my desk. I messed with my desk. That's it. If lady, you children played video games all weekend? I know that feeling. I I played uh, World of War of uh, World of Warships, which is a a really neat idea for a game. It's a terribly executed game because it feels like it's pay to win. does pivot. Awesome. It does swivel. All right. Let's get that painted up. Kevin Crawford. Ooh, Iron Caster. Shit. I'm just going to throw it out there. This wasn't really a stream I had planned tonight. <clears throat> Janet. Got a message from her, and she's just not feeling well. She's 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 not ill. She's suffering allergies. Allergies is a is a two pronged deal. Either you have like oh, I got allergies, you know I can't be around cats, or like you get allergies like <laughs> I'm gonna die. Papa got in seven. How you doing, sir? And I think usually Janet's just suffering from the first tier allergies that I illustrated there, but. Today she's in pretty miserable, pretty miserable. So I, I I wished her well and sent her back towards her her bed. And she's muttering something like, "John Schneider was so cute as a young man, and look at him now. He's such a Chad." I can't blame her. You know, I mean, I got a chance to see Cynthia Rothrick on one of twenty four sevens. 24-7 Fusion Media and Baron Norman Tog and Vigilante Williamson were talking about women that are out of their prime, quote-unquote. But then you have a lady like Miss Rothrick, and she's had some facial reconstru reconstruction done or some, some tightening up. And then her body is that of a yoga instructor. And you can't really tell what photos, especially the ones, the photos from neck down, which ones are pre-2010, which ones are post-2010. Yeah, Flady's waiting for the new boat for uh, World of War, World of Warships as we speak. Uh, the, the Japanese cruisers, I'm not too impressed with so far. I, I got the first one in the line, and I know that's usually like the one that's supposed to entice you on it, it's supposed to sell you on the entire line, and I'm not sold. I, I've played it probably five or six times, and it's a slow turning little thing and it doesn't really reload their torpedoes so fast. I'm just going to be like, okay, that's a hard pass. <clears throat> Warcraft. No, Warcraft. No, I don't play World of Warcraft. I play World of Warships. I used to play World of Tanks on my phone and then I, then I decided I'd get a job. And that's basically literally what was happening. Yeah, they've got subs on it now. Submarines are on World of Warships now. And it's it, it, it wasn't made with subs. Or maybe the, one of the first versions of it that they never released had subs. But the submarines for that game just don't feel right. They, they don't feel right at all. Papa Cotton's like, any pictures of women online are complete bullshit. Everybody's a catfish these days. I I kind of disagree because, like, you you can tell that, that Cynthia Rothrick has got a couple rings on her, but you can also see that she takes good care of herself. And when she does live appearances, she, she's not different. Yeah. Max Boyvin, yeah, I went to drive a tanker instead of being in World of Tanks. Mr. Max Boyvin, how you doing, sir? Yeah, submarines are available on new World of Warships. 
just kind of funny right now at my job. We're waiting on the, the mechanic bay to get finished working on my truck. Wednesday was going great until I spilled all my oil. <laughs> I think I think the oil cover got loose or took a crack in it. Oh, Papa Cotton. Oh man, that is some good advice right there. Guys, guys, this is this is it right here. That right there, that's that's the secret. First date, wait for first dates for like good weather. Take her to a water park. That way you're not gonna have any BS on your dates. Papa Cotton, that is genius. <laughs> that is that is such genius. I'm gonna have to use that. I'm gonna have to tell my friends that, tell my friends' kids that. <laughs> oh my god yeah that's that's kind of rough He's like, I don't, play, I don't mess around with World of Warships that much. It's a lot of Haskell. Yes. Yes, it is. That's entirely correct. I'm going to have to use that in my future speeches to my friends. I had a couple friends that they're still unmarried in their 30s and they're doing that dating game BS, and it's just it's just a bad game. Don't do it. Don't do it, young man. Save your money. Save your resources. <laughs> Most women don't fall for that old trick. I take them to the mall and see what they're really interested in. No. No. I've had one date start at the mall and it did not go well for us after that because I saw what she was interested in. Yeah. So I hope everybody's had a good weekend. Today was Monday. We were going to talk about this movie called Wild Hogs. And for those of you that are just joining, Janet is not going to be in here tonight. We are instead talking about whatever comes to mind. Including something that I heard today. And... Uh, really don't know how to bring it up. Because I don't want to bring it up. So I probably won't bring it up. But... If any of you are curious about your money, if any of you Americans are curious about your money, last Wednesday, the Federal Reserve is started to beta test the digital dollar. And the end game for that is for you to dump all your money in the Federal Reserve. You dump all of your money in the Federal Reserve and they give you a good showing, a good return, and you get your little card, your stamp, your your injection. However, however you're going to be transacting with this Federal Reserve dollar, that's completely digital. And they're going to make it to where initially those that early adopt are going to get like the king's ransom on it. And... For those of you that hold out and keep your wealth away from the Federal Reserve, uh, it's going to be less and less and less. So you're going to probably have to foster a secondary currency in your local environment because they they uh, the rewards they're they're going to be trying to stop non digital transactions, which is pathetic. It it really is.
I can only hope they fail as badly as Joe Biden trying to ascend the stairs. Papa Gotten says, women are like tigers. I like them. I think they're beautiful, but I'm not trying to keep them in my house. They're they're very dangerous. <laughs> yeah. Uh, James L., you're probably going to have to have some sort of scanner or something, something, uh, a new, a new card tied to a new, uh, account for you at the fed. I'm not looking forward to this. Don't think I am. I aim to misbehave. Yeah. Six nations, 31 Kings grabs it. He's like barter system. I've got dope. Okay. Well, I got a 12 pack of Mountain Dew. All right. Shadow and Sons like uh, I'm going to pass the whole mark of the beast thing. I'm I'm just going to do myself a favor, get to the front of the gallows, ready to hang out with Jesus. They've been trying to kill ladies like they've been trying to kill a bunch of money for years on the places that don't accept cash. Good. James L says I just invented booty coin. Ooh, how thick is your booty coin? Max Boyman says cryptocurrency was an attempt to take money away from the hand type of people running in Federal Reserve, but idiots went ahead and handed their crypto to the same type of people. Yes, they did. And initially, crypto could have could have really turned into a better economy. Because initially, it started out looking like that's so exactly what we were going to get. We were going to get a non-IMF-backed type of currency. And instead, you know, it would be a currency that would be dictated by the needs of the people. It would be be regulated by the market. But instead, we have this going on. Yeah, Max Boyvin, yeah, FTX is completely... Goodbye monetization. I never liked your 87 cents a month anyway. Um, it, it, It completely is being run by by fools. Like this, this young kid was running FTX, and people would see this guy crashed out. I have an appointment at FTX. Okay, well, come on in. Who's that guy who crashed out on the on the beanbag chair out in the lobby? Oh, that's uh, that's somebody else. And all of a sudden, here comes the FTX CEO, fresh from his nap off the beanbag chair, and people would just be thinking, "Oh man, this guy knows all the answers. He's he's got all the." He, he's, he's a guru. He knows he knows what's going on. The guy was a shyster of the complete, complete degree. Yeah. And FTX has taken down another cryptocurrency. Yeah. Yeah. The, what? Oh, man. Ladies like it'll be like Rips and Shadowrun. Yeah, it will. And Papa Cotton says, I didn't see what part of cryptocurrency did not look like a scam. I'm dead. I'm glad I did not get into that bullshit. Yeah, Biden sends money to the Ukraine. Ukraine sends money to FTX. FTX sends money to Biden. It, it's a good system. It, it's how, how it works. Uh, FTX is the one we know of. That exactly. That's the one that we can we can put our finger on it and be like, this is why we didn't trust crypto. And there's other other systems doing the same exact thing. That's that's the thing. You know, this is the first one that we actually got a chance to, to check out. Celsius as well. I did not hear about Celsius, but I'm sure if I Google it, I could find out about it. The owner of the exchange has had something in common. What? A uh, completely uh, Bolshevik mindset? I'm not trying to, you know, peg them here, but I'm I'm trying to zero in on what they've got in common. I can't tell you what. <laughs> so this is my first solo stream I've done in a while. I put a StreamYard link in there, but if you guys want me to just talk to you guys and, and respond to chat while I slot paint and paint things, I, I can do that too. I, I'm i quite okay with whatever you want to do. I've got a couple hours to burn. 
I was going to be online tonight. Completely okay with being online tonight. Papa Cotton says, that dude should be in prison, but he's connected, so he'll never see the inside of a cell. Yeah. Yeah, he he, he just paid for everybody's next campaign. There's not a single thing they're going to do to him. He's, he's going to skate away freer than an Illinois Democrat from any crime scene. Ghislaine Maxwell traffics children to no to to nobody nobody else. Ghislaine Maxwell, she's she's on it. She can't look at who her ledger's filled with. Can't look at can't look at anything. <laughs> it's all shit. It is. Max Boyvin says the Bolsheviks, eighty five percent of a certain ethnicity. Same as the installed president of the Ukraine. Yes, he was installed. He was not chosen for any other reason than his ability to funnel money. That's it. That's all he is. He's just a bag man. Yeah, Maxwell, she was she she's one too. R. Kelly will suffer more time than Ghislaine Maxwell. I can I can guarantee you as a day is long. And this is the world that we continue to function in. And a lot of us are, are scared. A lot of us don't want to do the, the bad thing. You know, we're like, hey, we're going to mobilize and uh, utilize what we've got so our grandkids don't have a living hell they live in. And I don't want to have some 86-year-old president pervert sniffing my great-granddaughter. Maxwell's probably not in jail anymore. She's she probably only was at a jail for photo ops. And then after that, she got a trip to a CIA-held island, hanging out, doing some things. She might even not be even part of this planner existence in, anymore. She might, she might be pushing daisies. Or she might have had a a Baghdad Bob job done on her where she got a, a new nose, a new face. <laughs> Bob Cotton's like, she's probably back at the Queen's cabin. <laughs> James is like, she's clipping booty coins to save the metal. Maxwell, family secret. She's a club fed. It'd be great if she was actually at a federal penitentiary. But federal penitentiaries aren't nearly as hard as state penitentiaries. So I don't see what that would actually do to her. She wouldn't come out hardened. She wouldn't come out scarred or or, or properly, you know, uh, um, plunged. She would not have had her cavities properly explored in a federal pen like she would have in a, in a state. She would go, come out from a state penitentiary waiting on her boo to get free. You know, I, I'm just I'm just saying that and the fact that that if if she actually went to a state pen, she wouldn't be breathing. She wouldn't be breathing. Your state penitentiary it doesn't matter if it's male or female population. You fuck with kids, you're not coming out except in a underneath a covered sheet. She would be gone. Yeah, Martha Stewart got street cred. I tell you what, Martha Stewart for being eighty two years old. She looks like she's in her like flirty fifties. I, I'm just saying. And besides, it looks like her and uh, who was the the rap star she did the the cooking show with? <laughs> yeah, Papa Cotton. If you want to see the client list, look at any ballot. It'll be both parties. The same people that keep going and going and going and going and going. It's amazing. Mitt Romney keeps getting elected. Most unlikable guy. The wood chipper would be more fun. Agreed. Six Nation, three, one kings. Snoop Dogg. It was Snoop Dogg. Yes, Snoop and his crew. Uh, they probably did run a ghost train on her. Somebody was trying to tell us last night, like, no, nah, they wouldn't do that. She's too dry. She, um, <laughs> bro, excuse me. For us guys, they they sell you blue pills. Hey, 
Are you feeling a little soft in the mornings? Do you want to wake up full of action and ready to go? Buy these blue pills. It'll fix you. For women, it's the same thing. Hey, sweetie, is your clam feeling a little dry when you get up in the mornings? Do you need to feel the moisture of love once more? They can they can completely medicate you to where you turn into your 20 or 18-year-old self. <laughs> Papa Cotton's like, she got blacked. <laughs> I've seen those videos before. <laughs> oh, I'm going to die. Martha Stewart loves getting both of her holes caked. Watch this week as we find out just exactly what a turnstile. What is that? A lazy Susan's for? Thanks, guys, for showing up, for being here tonight. Those blue pills scare the shit out of me. Priya Prism is not cool. No, it's not. It, it's not. Smoke some jam from the commissary. It's all good. Oh, yeah. Tell you what, I never ate any bakery products after boot camp. All right, you guys need to read this. Sex and good, but have you ever war game the Spanish succession? Secession in 10 millimeter. <laughs> and uh, then I got a thanks recovery for DM James. DM James isn't showing up tonight. Huh. Let me throw a link out to that man. See if he wants to swing by my channel. I know, I know he's busy. He's probably running a vampire game. Poor guy. I don't know if James will be in, but I just threw a link out to the man. I know he's busy. Usually in the later evening, he's busier. But uh, we always need to have somebody we know that's willing to step up and do a stream. Last week, I, will, I don't think I was able to do table breakers. And I was telling Connell, just, just get on there and do it. You're, you're going to make your own crew. You're going to, you're going to have, you're going to find your own audience over the course of time. You, you, you get an audience that really, they want to be there for every stream you do. They want to do stuff with you and your crew. Just, you need to, to farm it out. You need to develop it. I like Connell. I want him to succeed with his succession or with, with his success though, he's going to grow. And I mean, he's going to get, different opinions than what he has now trust me guys i know i've known him for over 10 years he's got some weird opinions what you guys have seen is just kind of the tip of the iceberg i think his success happens to him i think he's going to see some of his ideas will not work and he'll get kind of sad about that but he's going to want to follow success when i mean success i mean if he makes money that'd be great It's a weird niche we have the non non politically correct right right of right wing RPG streamers. Yeah, it, it is. It is very different, but that's that's okay. DM James is usually the guy I'm listening to on the way home, but I had to listen to my parents tonight. Listen to them talk about things, and they're uh, they're in their seventies, so it's like, ah, oh, you're awake still. Let me talk. Let me listen to you. No. I put a link out there in the chat. So 
give me a moment. I'll put a link up there. And if you guys, if somebody wants to discuss something in here, we will do that. I'm mainly in the mood to paint. If you're in the mood to talk about something, if you got a complaint, I'd be more than happy to, to give you a, your, your, your pulpit. Not a super big channel. Shadow and Sun's like, I'll be there shortly. Okay. Like I said, I can cover six hours by myself, but at the same time, I I don't need to. <laughs> I want my friends to get their, their licks in, too. Ah, Max Boyvin has bought Dungeons and Delvers. I got the D20 system. Kill Tony is starting. I got to bail. Papa Cotton 7th. Hey, man, it was great having you in here. We will talk more on this material later. Uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm thinking that, like, I'm getting a bunch of people asking me if I'd start doing my solo streams again. So I am going to probably start doing one or two of those a week. David Gile says, hooray, Mr. Max Boyvin. Yeah, it's awesome. I, I like... I like the uh, Dungeons and Delvers quite a bit, and I, I don't mind discussing it because it is actually a really well thought out game. Um, there is enough there to be worth the purchase. I think. I, I I think if you if you like Rule Cyclopedia or Holmes Moldvay, Beck me. I mean, you you can go and buy those in PDF or print for a cheap price, or you could write a game that was written by somebody who's still alive and not an old folks home and probably deserves your money a little more because Mr. David and his lovely wife, Melissa are doing their best to make a good game engine that they can set their adventures in. And that's a pretty neat idea. They they wanted a place to set up a, a, a game. You know, I want to be able to run in this, this nation or in this land. And that's why they started doing Dungeons and Delvers. But Dungeons and Delvers is really a, a neat little game. There's a bunch of people I know that are taken into the, the die pool version of it. And they are just nonstop. Yeah, the D20 burnout is real. Nothing wrong with D20, but if you want to play a game that's a lot like Star Wars Fantasy D6, if you want to play a die pool game, please. I like die pool version games, but when I want to run a game for a long damn time, I don't get a crew of people together that seem they can last at a table unless I'm running like D&D or some D20 version of a game. Hopefully when I start running my own game, Be able to run that table for a long time. That's the, the hope and the glory, right? Um, David Gile asked me, what do you like more about dice pool stuff? Um, for dice pool games, uh, you it, it, it always feels like the, the interaction with the world is just, it just feels a little more organic. The, uh, the, the 95% or 5% increments that you get with D20s always feels like it, it just it just doesn't quite feel like this is a world. It feels like we're in a, a digital matrix that your brain is trying to construct and everything is in increments of 5 or 5%. And therefore, that's why I prefer the, the dipole version. 
Yeah, David Guile, Shadow and Sun. David Guile was the man who wrote Dungeons and Delvers, both the Die Pool version and the D20 version. I've put up about 10 videos so far on Dungeons and Delvers. David, if you want to come on, I'd be more than happy to send you. There, there's a link for you in chat. And let me get this squared away for you, sir. There. <clears throat> Shadow and Sun asks a question. How's your game better than the hundreds of games already out there? What's the 30-second sales pitch? I know, I know. We're we're catching you with your pants down. You're probably in the bathroom listening to us, or worse yet, you just got shampoo in your eye while you're trying to have a shower, and we've just ruined it. That's that's always fun, right? No, it's not. Because I know what I would like to say for Shadow, but I want Shadow to hear it from the game's creator because I'm not the game's creator. Got to go away for a second. He has to go get his mic. Anybody here have ham for Thanksgiving? I'm a particular ham aficionado. If we hang out together and you expect me to eat turkey, you aren't my friend. I'm not a turkey guy. If you have ham, we can be really good friends. Well, James L., I'm a, uh, on, on the game system I want to run, I want to run a game like D&D, &D, but I don't want resolution to be done with a D20. In fact, I don't want a D20 in that game ever. I'm, I'm so burned out with D20. I, I could go... The next games I run, if if they're not with a D20, I'm not going to miss them. Back, and I do prefer ham, says David Guile. Better flavor and texture. Ham for Thanksgiving, breakfast and dinner, two times ready. Baby back ribs for Christmas. Ooh, that sounds nice. Boyvin says, ham is for Easter. Making 15 bean soup with ham and split pea right now. Always love ham with turkey dinner. See, my cousin, she had she had turkey for us, which isn't bad. I'm not saying I won't eat it. It's just that if that's all we have to eat, yeah, I'm going to eat the turkey. But I, I, I go for dark meat turkey. I'm not a big fan of the, the chest meat, the breast meat. I, I, it's just too dry. If I, have to, if I have to brine the pieces of turkey off the meat, off the bird and brine it in gravy for about three minutes that that's probably not a, a sign that i like it oh hello mr david guile welcome hey, hey uh my robot voice in or anything no yay okay internet's good Welcome to uh, our stream tonight. This is a uh, impromptu stream, and the fact that you had the ability to jump on, I must thank you. Well, thanks for having me, and thanks for doing a stream tonight. It gives me something to watch while I do some writing. Um, okay. Uh, I, I the, with the the dice pool thing, I've been kind of thinking about 
you know, because I was talking about doing a second edition of Delvers, maybe that would also be a dice pool version. The only issue is how would I handle uh, hit points? Because one thing that one of the guys that loves the dice pool version, he likes that it, it uses a very small amount of wounds. Okay. So instead of having like a hit point blow, you know, where you got like, you know, 30 hit points or whatever, you have like five wounds and weapons do one damage or two damage. And I just don't know if I want to retool everything for that purpose as well. I don't know. Is, is, is your game, are you going to do hit points? I'll, I'll do hit points. I, I really, I, I've gotten used to polyhedrals. And I haven't looked at the die pool version that much. I'm I'm fairly cool with the vitality and wound points the way you have it. I think it's pretty neat the mm -hmm. way you've you've got it split there. Okay. Um, the, the, really, the only thing is the in, in the the dice pool version that we did was like if you're like a fighter, I think you have five wounds and weapons do one damage or two damage. So it's uh, it, you don't like get wounds every level anyway. So the guy that yeah. likes the game, he likes it because it kind of keeps things more uh, down to earth or something. Uh, he has a just, he just likes it for some reason. And I was thinking, could I do that? Do I want to redo all the friggin' spells and everything and all the, the monsters so they do like one, two, three, whatever damage? And I don't know. I, I I know what he I know why he likes it, and I kind of like that same idea because it avoids like you know oh you're a fighter and you get hit by fire and you shrug it off you fall off a cliff no big deal because you have so many hit points mm -hmm. but yeah I don't know <laughs> I have to think about that Fair but enough. making it a dice pool system would be pretty easy true and. Uh, is your dice pool, uh, you said you like polyhedral, so are you going to end up doing like a D4, or D6, D8, like you're going to use all the dice for your, your system, or are you going to do like a D6 thing? Or D10 uh, actually, thing? My, the game I'm going to be using is going to be D100. I, I just want, I, I want a oh. better variance, and I'm going for the role master approach. Okay, I haven't, uh, I haven't played role master, so I don't, how, how does that work? It's basically a rollover D100 version of a game, uh, of, of a D&D &D game. And you have like an armor value. You have to roll all your bonuses plus D100 to beat that. If you have a saving throw, the way we played it was you have these bonuses that add to it, roll over to beat that. And I, I had a, a friend that he modified his role master to be rollover. And it worked very well. Then he died of leukemia, and we haven't had anybody since then <laughs> to to run that. But it, it uh his version of Rollmaster, we played it on and off for about maybe four or five years, and it worked really well because everything was done via D one hundred, and he even started getting into this idea that you would roll to hit, and you if you beat the armor value you're looking for, you hit. But you took the die roll that you did for your D100 and you flip that. And that was the hit location. And now you roll damage against said location, including armor damage and hit point damage. And there might be parts of the game that, you know, somebody gets a good lucky hit on you. And all of a sudden, like... You're a guy that has really nice band braces and pauldrons, but your breastplate for your, your plate mail, it's gone. And your armor value just dropped by 30 or 40 percent. So I got I really like okay. that. And I but that that's just me. I don't I like playing dice pool games, but I can never keep them going for more than a year. That's my biggest problem. My players will peter out. If I run a D20 game, they they will stay for three or four years. I will keep a table for, right now I'm on year number seven with three of my players. I wonder why that is. 
I, I just because for me, I don't really care about the system so much. Like D twenty, it it seems um, uh, pretty simple and straightforward. You know, roll and if you get the number, you do the thing. Yeah, I I, I would have no problem doing a dice like uh, with the dice pool thing that we did. We did it for our daughter when she was like seven, and she had no problem playing the game. And um, uh, so I, I don't know why. I, I I'm curious if there's some kind of reason why a player would be like a dice pool will play for a while but then we're going to get bored because the resolution mechanic is different that just seems really weird now my 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 current people the the ones that i hang out with the ones that i i do things with they are D D players um we were going to play palladium on an alternate game day with a friend of mine, but that fell through. And so he's like, well, I'm just going to run Pathfinder. And now he's got the table of eight people again. So I'm thinking, Jesus, this is a, this is weird because you hear a lot of people say, I can't get four people to a table. And me and Chris tell people, Hey, if you want to play, here's the time be here right now. I'm running a usual game of six to seven people. And it's, it's not a very easy system. Pathfinder is not known for its like, ease of play no i i played third edition and from what i i've seen a pathfinder i, I don't i've never played it but it looks the same and people tell me that it's just third edition uh it carried on yeah and and that's basically what it is they they paizo people released it at the gen con where they did and then they ran around the gym, Gen Con, basically screaming, "This is the best game ever made!" <laughs> and like okay. they were flaunting it right in front of Wizards of the Coast because they were like getting oh, a lot sure. of people to beta test it. Hundred thousand yeah. downloads for beta testing, and they thought that was a reason to like scream in Wizards' face. You know, we're going to beat up fourth edition players. You know, and. It was kind of cute and funny, but then they started getting real serious about it. Like, this is the best game ever, ever. Only one thing was changed, basically. The rest of it's all 3.5 and 3.0. That's it. Hey, Calvinani. But it, it's it's a it's funny because a lot of people I know they they ask me like, "Do you run Pathfinder or 3.0?" Well, majority of my game come come from Pathfinder, but. I do use some things from my third edition stuff. My third edition library never got updated. And I don't really need to update it because it's all the same freaking system. It's all yeah, based on a D20. Easy to, I, I've, I've, well, I've converted stuff over for fourth edition. Yeah. Because uh, uh, we, we played fourth edition for a while. Um, so it's, yeah, I mean, that would be even easier to convert stuff over. It's kind of, you know, it's Pathfinder's this third edition plus. Nice. And I realized there's a comments thing, and I didn't ever answer Shadow and Sun. Okay, well, I'll shut up for 30 seconds. Uh, it depends on why you don't like rule cyclopedia or, or official D&D stuff. Uh, the, the the differences between my game and Watsu stuff, there's a lot of differences. Um, and I guess, you know, if you want armor with damage resistance, you want magic systems that make a little more sense, you want more, uh, you don't want a big reliance on healing magic and healing magic items and all those things, then it's a D&D game, it's a D20 game that you probably like if you like those things, or if you just want something fresh and different, it's, it's not just like oh it's uh, it's this edition or that edition with some house rules a few tweaks here and there it's like a whole rebuild for things that make more sense to me and i don't unfortunately shadow and Sun, i don't know if you would like those changes because i don't know what you're looking for or what you don't like about official D, &D stuff so it'd be useful to, from you to tell me what you hate about like like rule cyclopedia or, or beck me and then i could tell you Oh well, I address yeah, those things, or those don't exist. Yeah, he he's, he says I hate race as class. I love first and second edition D and D. There's no race as class. Um, 
I Races don't know what flat. Arduin is. Arduin is a very early RPG. Like 1979, 1981 era. It's it was an RPG that came out. Yeah. <laughs> Third, fourth, and fifth edition were created by a company I hate. <laughs> like in my lore, Elf Druids and Rangers are the same dude. <laughs> uh, I don't. So, so James L. Races class. I don't like races class because I don't like the idea of like all dwarves are the same. And I know um, I, I've heard that um, there's a game that does it where I think I was on t-shirt that t-shirted historians channel and someone brought up um, a game where like they're the racist class. There's they're two different versions of everything. I don't like that either because it's this idea of like, okay, you're a dwarf. Well, you're either this or that. And what There's I, what I would right prefer now. instead is, a, I, it doesn't make any sense to me. Um, and and in my game, Endeavors, Druids, and Rangers, they're not the same at all. I, they don't. Rangers don't even get um, inherent spells. Uh, and Shadow, if you hate third and fourth and fifth, because maybe a company you hate. Well, I'm not that company. I don't know if you've heard me say this, David, but I try to make sure that whenever I'm talking about you and Big Geek Emporium, I always want to tell people, like, David Guile doesn't know who you are, but he doesn't have a problem with you raising your kids however you see fit. He doesn't have a problem with you being an independent-minded person. Whereas there's big corporations out there that they're giving money so people turn into automatrons and they turn into these pathetic robots. And if you if you differ from their think, then you're a bad person. And David Guile is not that guy. Depending on how you raise your kid, I've seen what some people do with their kids. I might not like you. Okay, that's because I got kids of my own. And I don't know. Some people do things with their kids or with their kids that approve of yeah exactly I, I i can agree with that but i don't approve of of public education oh, that's why we took our kids uh we're homeschooling all of our kids now they started doing it a few years ago didn't like what the schools around here were doing and, and we're in a we're in oregon we're in a pretty conservative county and they were still doing things that we didn't like we weren't even aware of and we found out we're like that same day well not going to school anymore Yanked them out. And this is also why you're moving out of Oregon, I assume, too. Well, that uh, we're on a we're on a seventy acre farm, and if we don't farm it, they have the property tax, and we're leasing it to someone. But they might be going out of business. They go out of business. We got to find someone to deal with it. We don't want to deal with that headache anymore. So we're just selling it to someone that whatever they want to do with it. And then we're we're getting out. We're gonna get uh, something smaller. I don't blame you. Uh, I'm sorry, Baron G Rock. I don't have I don't have the wilds. You, you know, Janet Janet is here with us in spirit. Well, yeah, Shadow, you like no. palladium. Oh, what do you like about palladium? Uh, but not not D and D. If you don't mind answering that, Shadow and Son. Oh, okay, here we go. Lots of choices. James, like races everyone. class. Oh. Go ahead. What do you say? Uh, I was That's, just uh, James is saying, uh, oh, okay. Go ahead. I'm probably on a, my internet's probably bad, so I'm, I'm lagging behind. I'm not trying to talk over you. I'm just. Go ahead, David. Uh, uh, racist class is okay if anchored in a particular. I, I, yeah, I don't mind that. If, if you have a, if you make a race and there's like a in game reason why, like, um, 
I don't like the uh, like dwarves in second edition couldn't be wizards, and I don't know if they explain why, but I know in second edition dwarves are magic resistant, and that's probably why I didn't have a problem with that. They're naturally resistant to magic, so it kind of makes sense why they couldn't be wizards. But I don't think they could be thieves in second edition D and D. And if that's true, that that doesn't make sense. Like a dwarf can't learn to steal and disable traps. That no, I don't, I don't agree with that. But if you got an in-world reason, then yeah, you can. Res- I don't mind restricting stuff or like making the race like kind of monolithic in, in behavior. But dwarves and elves don't feel like they would be. They would all behave the exact same fashion, which is, I guess, by default why I wouldn't like that. Shadow says, I do like everyone to have lots of choices, and I hate the idea of humans being superior to elves and dwarves. Elves are a step away from angels. Dwarves are just a badass, longer-lived humans. They are in the Tolkien universe. Yes, you're right. Yes, yes. But if you're going off world of mythology, that's not necessarily the case. And actually, dwarves could be thieves in first and second edition. Oh, okay. In second edition, they could be thieves of unlimited level, if I remember right. Thieves, any any demi-human could be an unlimited level thief. W- was there a race that couldn't be a fighter? I'm not certain if they there if there was a race that could not be a fighter. I know in AD and D first edition, fighters were allowed by all demi human classes up to like fifth or seventh level. Okay, I'm trying to see if there's a a race that couldn't be some, maybe I'm, I'm just misremembering stuff, but I thought there was some like a race that couldn't be a thief or couldn't be a fighter. But I mean, th- th- those are just because those are like professions I feel like anyone could try to do and they shouldn't be restricted from that. Um, but like again, dwarves not really wizards make sense just because of their inherent magical resistance. And in third edition, they dropped that, so I didn't really care that you know, oh, dwarves can be wizards now, I didn't see a problem with something like that. Uh, second palladium calls so, but I don't know. Oh, for the record, okay, so shout out played. Okay, for the record, I played first, second edition DD. Ard Hill, uh, Ar, 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 uh, Arduin is what he spelled there. Palladium, Call of Cthulhu, and Traveler, along with about every other game made by TSR. So he's referencing like Gangbusters or Boot Hill, early TSR stuff. Yeah, those are way before my time. Yeah. James L. is like, I'm all for teaching the, the students not to wail on a sensitive fruity kid in the class but i'm not for the teachers union issuing carmen miranda headdresses composed of said fruit wow (laughs) our school didn't go that far but they crossed the line so we just decided and that's you know oh that's what we know they did who knows what they were gonna do or who knows what they were doing that we weren't aware of so we just thought okay no no we're done When, when you have teachers that are asking kids about, does your father make you play with boy toys at home? <laughs> does your father not like it when you wear a dress, little Timmy? Um, that's, that's just a little bit too far, in my opinion. Well, my, my daughter, uh, well, my daughter, she... Uh, 
It's uh, us playing StarCraft Two. Well, what's this game? She got really into it. Then she got bored of it. What else do we got? Well, I got this game called Dawn of War. She got really into that. Then she found out that, oh, Dawn of War, it's a video game of an actual game that you can get minis for. Then she got really into that. And uh, she's got thousands of points worth of Black Templar Space Marines and Orcs and Imperial Guard. We got her a, uh, we actually got her a custom cake for her birthday and we put a Bane Blade on it. Um, and just imagine, you know, Oh, you like Warhammer? Let's chop your boobs off. <laughs> so, uh, no, I don't want to. Don't want to deal with that. Because she she does like a lot of stuff that you would you know stereotypically boys would like. Like she likes dragons. She likes dinosaurs. But she also likes stereotypically girls. She's really obsessed with horses. I don't know why, but. Like my sisters were into horses a lot. Uh, I, I don't get the horse thing. I don't don't care. But I could just see a teacher trying to go. Oh, you like dinosaurs and dragons and space marines or whatever. That's what boys like. Are you sure you're not a boy? Ugh. And and in uh, and in Oregon, they wanted to, and they might have actually done this. They wanted to pass something where kids of a certain age could make medical decisions behind their parents' back. So they were they were doing COVID uh, clinics at the schools without parent knowledge. That's a big no no. Don't do that. Well a lot of the parents parents didn't even hear about it. When they heard about it, they were they were pretty pissed. But no, there, there was no alerts going out. And so someone had heard about it and then started telling parents about it. And they're like, what the hell's going on? And then they went down there and took their kids out of school. Uh, a lot of them just took their kids out of school for the day. But it's just the idea like, you know, hey, we're just not even going to tell you we're going to do this stuff. We're going to do it behind your back. And who knows what else they were doing or want to do. Calvinani says, when I was in high school, the rules were very clear about certain things a teacher could never talk about with students. Those days are over. <laughs> yeah. New Dark Tide game. Oh, yeah. I heard about Dark Tide. Protect tomboys at all costs. <laughs> Parents were hippies, wouldn't buy toy weapons. Well, <laughs> yeah. Find a workaround. So when is when is your exit day from Oregon? Um Probably, well, the people who want to buy this place, they want to actually be moving in for a very long time. So when we buy the other place, we might just wait until next year when it's not winter to pack up and go down there. But we, we might just, you know, do it after Christmas. There are people aren't here, you know, we got some friends and family around here. We might just wait till after Christmas before we start going. At least that way we could do that with them. Because we'll be a good distance away. It'll be hard to come back. Yeah. Probably Oregon probably want to come to back. Oklahoma. Oregon to Oklahoma is quite a ways. Yeah. And we gotta pack like 40 chickens there. It's not even the the it's not even the packing up of miniatures that upsets you. It's the chickens. Uh, daughter has named every chicken. And they're kind of her responsibility to feed them and get the eggs from them. So we, we, we dare not leave a single one. Because every time we get one, we, we, we buy some chicks. Or actually a couple of them. Like one of them, 
uh, there was a time where she vanished. We thought she got picked off by a coyote or a fox. And then one day she comes hopping out of a, a shed, eight chicks in a row behind her. And what she, so what we had to do is we we catch them and we put them in a, in a bin with a, a heat lamp to keep them alive. And then she'll handle them all every day, all of them, pet them, hold them, feed them, and then she names them. So uh, they're all very uh, they're all very mellow and domesticated. Most of them you can just walk over and pick them up. They don't even care. She handles them so much. So they're, they're, they're really like pets. Wow. I know a few people that they, they treat their chickens pretty, pretty family-ish. Like all of these families are, I'm not, I'm not being racist, but I'm going to say that <laughs> the obvious thing is if you see them, they're Filipino. They're, they're non Anglo types. They're, they're, from the Philippines, they had a different value system for for farms and pets there than what we have here. You and I look at a chicken. I see a source of eggs. You see fried chicken. They look at it and they're like, the, one of the families I know looks at it and they're like, that's going to be seven years of food of uh, bug protection in the front yard. <laughs> Yeah, the only drawback is the poop. They poop everywhere. Yes. That that's the negative about chickens. So I gotta ask, I don't know if Shadow's still here for this, but I'll notate it's one minute and six one one hour and six minutes in there. Um for your for your game, the quick and dirty, I'm I'm just gonna say that what I love what I love about it. What for me differentiates it from other games is that it feels like Dungeons and Dragons. Hey, Eagle Rider. Hey, congratulations. Thousand subs. Awesome. Nice. Um, it feels like Dungeons and Dragons. But when you get into the races and you start exploring your class abilities, it feels like somebody's homebrew that has been thoroughly tested that for me is is where your game really feels different it feels so different when you're reading through it and you can see how things are put together and you start creating a character and it it feels like it's dnd but you're not playing in some crappy big corporate dnd setting it feels like you're playing in somebody's home world that has a history to it. There's there's events that have happened. And if you decide that you want to play a game that's very much tied to that world, you can do so. Well, we, we did play test it a lot. Uh, for, I, I forget when we, we started, where the, uh, the Black Book came from. That's where we, we started play testing it. And so I think that was like 2015 or something. 2016. So we, we, we did play test it for years. We play tested a lot with a bunch of different people. And we did do a campaign where if you heard of Age of Worms, the Age of Worms Adventure mm -hmm. Path. Yes. We we did do that. Um, because I, I I didn't want it to like keep playing and stuff while I was designing the game and rewriting stuff. So I just I'll just and I, I own the I own the adventure path. I always wanted to finish it. Uh, never did. Uh, we did it in third edition, and we got up to this. We 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 were going to start Spire Long Shadows, and then everything kind of fizzled. And so the play testing, I did that again, and I started converting it and, and changing things as we went because a lot of stuff in there, it's kind of doesn't make any sense or seems kind of boring. And we got up to the whatever the adventure was where you have to go to the canyon with giants and dragons and then that fizzled out but everyone got to like level 17 by the time that happened so we, you know, we it was this isn't just like a i want to make my own dnd i'll kind of just cobble stuff and tweak some stuff here and there and then you know whatever it was we did a lot of play testing and players would say i don't really like that ability that's not really worth it to me there was one guy who there was something the cleric got that he's like i don't really 
And I'm never going to pick that. I'm never going to pick that. I don't think it's worth it at all. So we, we would, you know, adjust the power of things. Uh, the fighter, that was that was way, way overpowered when we started doing it. And I actually had to take things away from it and keep taking things away from the fighter because that was just dominating everything. It was way too badass. But you know, it's been refined for years. And, and the second edition I want to do is because I thought of different ways to do things. Like make armor fully damage reduction, but you know, yeah, if you, you know, oh, it fills up the history. Well, yeah, we did a lot of stuff there. We, we put some of the kind of assumed default lore into things, and it's got a lot of effort put into it. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna ruin it with a second edition. I'm gonna ruin it all. It's pretty cool. It's really cool. Lee says, right now I'm loving a bard, the rogue, and a sorcerer. The bard is pretty cool. I really like the wizard. Well, the the wizard was the one, like, everyone would play a wizard, but everyone that play tested it, they always played, um, they always took Enchanter or Illusion. Mm -hmm. uh, almost no one used the Evoker stuff. I don't know. I, I, I think... One player said, well, everyone plays... I just want to try out your Illusion stuff because he, he saw it and he liked the idea that you could take Illusionist and take different talents and kind of Lego them together to do different things. Like you can kind of build your own magic effect out of all of them. And another guy played a Necromancer because he he never liked Necromancy stuff before. And so I did these two players that were doing stuff where I kept designing stuff to kind of please them and you know they liked it so i just i assume it works but i am curious bruce what you're gonna think about the sorcerer since that's the next class on the chopping block with you i okay in <laughs> standard three five pathfinder i hate the sorcerer <laughs> I, I just the 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 basic pathfinder Sorcerer is a neat idea, but they really emphasized it in the rules. Like, you are from an unusual paternity. You don't know what your parentage is, you know, and as you evolve, you you get these new things, and you're an edgy boy. The Sorcerer is my not-so-favorite. But I'm going to look at your sorcerer as much as I can with an unbiased amount. Because well, atypically, I love the wizard the hardest. But in your system, the game, the the, the way I want to play your game, I want to play as a uh, as a monk. Because the monk so far is the one that I go back to before every session that I do these videos. And I look at it and I'm like, that's too cool. The monk has probably pound for pound the most amazing stuff it can do. That might have been. I hope I didn't make it too good because I I've never liked the D and D monk. It's so boring. I, I never liked the third edition monk, and when I saw the fifth edition monk, I remember not liking that either. Like it just kind of seemed like they rolled back to third edition for the most part. Mm -hmm. And it just seemed like, okay, you can punch or you get the, uh, you're immune to poisons or something, but how often does poison come up? So who cares? Uh, you can, you don't age. Maybe that was the druid. <laughs> yeah, that's, a, that's atypical bard stuff right there. Or monk stuff. Monks, monks just have all these really neat abilities that are, Half drawn from the druid list. Well, and, and I'm hoping you like the sorcerer because you know the 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 paternity thing, the the parentage thing. We really went in all in on that. Like, if you're a a, a dragon sorcerer, you can only do dragony things. You can't pick outside. Everything's locked into a a concept. Okay. So if you're if you're a dragon sorcerer, you can't teleport because dragons don't teleport. 
you, right? You can't don't teleport. They don't teleport, so you can't teleport. Well, actually, it's specifically it's a red dragon bloodline, so you, you can't do like wall of ice. Which red dragons don't do wall of ice. That's too cool. And then the undead one, you know, you can't, you can't, uh, you can't heal people. You can't, I don't know, warp wood. Or spray acid everywhere because undead don't do those things. So you can't do those things. Monks should always be like 1970s Shaw Brothers. I don't, I don't think I've seen any of those movies. So I don't know. I was born in the 80s, Flady, so I don't... There's a lot of movies I haven't seen. Although, with the way media is going, I've been going back and watching older and older stuff because I'm running out of new stuff to watch. Me me and Janet have an entire playlist of videos I that know, will help no. you. <laughs> well, you, you. I've already seen The Thing. That was a good one. Um, but anything like 2016 and on, I'm very skeptical about. Our, our videos on Monday night, I don't think there's anything we've done that's post-2012. Oh, good. We don't we don't talk about the new movies. I mean, we've we've mentioned Maverick a couple times because that was like the best that the year will give us. But that that's it. Top Top Gun Maverick is is probably the best movie we've seen this year. I haven't we haven't seen that one yet. We don't go to the theaters. We we really can't. We got four kids, but we want you, to wait, see that you, one. You said you have four children. Yeah. Wow, I thought you had only like two. <laughs> you gotta, you gotta get that uh, replacement right up. You know. I know. I I didn't do much to help that. I'm sorry. Well, at least at least you got it. Yeah, yeah. Even it out. Yeah. Better than the people that. Oh, we got dogs and cats, and they're the same thing as kids, so whatever. <laughs> Listen, I, nobody here gets drunk and forgets to pull out and then goes and adopts a, a dog, okay? We we accept our faults and flaws. I actually, uh, I, had, I knew a couple. The, the, the wife wanted kids. The husband didn't want them. And he, he bought her a dog to placate her. And then... Like three or four years later, she's like, I'm a man now. Get my boobs chopped off. And I was like, okay, well, whatever. <laughs> Sounds like uh, one of my buddies from the oil field. He was he was all like not into making babies. And finally he met one girl from one of the best westerns that we ended up staying at. And he fell head over heels in love with her. And I mean, she's a pretty girl, but she started taking him to church and everything and like after a year and a half of him in the oil field he he gave his resignation and he's like i I can't do this you guys are out there as soon as the day is over you're you're in a hotel bar hitting on wait staff and trying to get laid with anything that'll move i gotta leave i can't hang out with you anymore okay whatever Flady says, the five deadly venoms Chinese super ninjas. Is that a good one? It is. The five deadly venoms is a good movie. 36 Chambers of Shaolin is one of my favorites. Janet hasn't discovered that one yet. I'm about to pop that one on her. Um, Max is like, that's a good start for kids, but I, I, I can't talk. I have no kids. I wanted a lot of kids. I'm just not unlikable. I'm, a, I'm unlikable. <sighs> hey, Hungar. Hungar. Hold on. Hold on, Hungar. Let me throw you a link out there, my bud. I know, I know you always have things to say. Max, you can't be that unlikable. You got the D20 Delvers book.
Hey, Hungar, go look in your brother's Discord. I'm getting ready to drop something over there. Right in his general tab. There you go. <laughs> Two hardcovers, lady. Well, if you want more, I put it on sale until... Uh... It's like a Thanksgiving Black Friday thing until the, I guess, Thursdays when whenever I wake up on the first and remember to turn it off. I'm gonna end the sale, but it's marked down a bit. What is up, everybody? Hello, Hungar. Give David a second. He's uh, he's got a slower internet. Yeah, I might be lagging behind. So it's my first time I'm with Hungar. What's up, David? I have three T-shirts up now. On where? Uh, let me see. I will put the link and. The chat. They are at T Public, and they are all horrible and awesome. So, in fact, gamer, I replied to you in the, the channel there. I miss those Saturday night, night movies, watching kung fu films on cable. Streaming does not cut it. Tap the, the Mao Wong MC and Bruce Wong's Deadly Fingers or some other film. Good times. Yeah. So for some reason, my chat's not showing up on the thing. You put it in the private chat or the regular comments? In the comments yeah. on YouTube. Okay. Um, let me... Let me open up my YouTube real quick. I'll throw it in a private chat, and if you want to paste it, you can. Okay, let me let me get you squared up here, Hungar. Add you as moderator. Go ahead and reprint your uh, or or. Uh, Redo your, your link there. You should have links available. There we go. There you go. So, yeah, I've got three designs. Sweet. Uh, I got the Hungar the Barbarian, that big bad gamer made. I've got my afro. And then Justin Thor made a meme of me. And I decided to put that on a t-shirt too because it's horrible. Where can I go see this meme? You can look at the link. And it's the first t-shirt on the link. Right. <laughs> Still loading for me. <laughs> are those not awesome t-shirts or what? <laughs> those are great, dude. Oh, man. <laughs> Man, Cal, I hope you play some D&D &D with him. Oh, that's, 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 that's a good uncle right there. Yes. 
that is a good uncle. Yeah, my 17 year old, she loved the books because she wants to run a game. Which is cool. And hey, I've been out of the hospital since last Friday. Is this a new record? It's been the shit, it's been the Friday before Thanksgiving. So yeah, it's been a, a week or so. Your situation, it's not going to be one of those like miraculous recovery situations, is it, Hungar? No, nah, there's no recovery. But it's all good, man. You yeah. Know, my life has been awesome. I have no regrets. That's awesome, man. That really is awesome to hear because the, the main thing is that like I'd love it if, if you got to play more games. Yeah. I've been gaming since I was like eight. Like I spent a two or three hours today on Conan Exiles with Justin Thor. Mm -hmm. The one who made that first picture. Yeah. Yeah, the best meme. He, he put my head on one of the funniest memes ever. One of the worst memes ever. <laughs> it's funny. The Fat Gamer, have you checked out the Thingiverse? DM James uh, loves that site. Thingiverse is great. I don't have a 3D printer. I just bought one for DM James. So if I want anything, I just tell him and he print, he prints it for me. Nice. I want to make a S I want to find a place where I can make an STL of that picture that Big Bad RPG made me. Okay. Of the Hungar the Starvarian. Oh. I put this up as my audio picture for fun. <laughs> it looks like the lady off of the Muppet show. Yeah. She get that as, a, as a 3D print. Of course, I've got this. I want to get that 3D printed into a fig. It's badass. But by, by the way, Hungar, there were some complaints about your brother not being available for, for chat or stream tonight or anything. His new medication, he's still getting used to it. Okay. He's doing good. I talked to him earlier today. Me and Justin were going to snipe his stream when he went on, but he's not feeling too great. But he's getting a lot better. I can say that he's getting a lot better. Things are getting take, taken care of. And, you know... He should be back at it soon. Okay. Just a lot of adjustments. I didn't realize you guys were both going through the same, not the same exact thing, but you're going through that, yeah. that period in life where you're adjusting your body to your new medications. I take a pharmacy. I'm not there yet. 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 Mr. Guile here, he was born in the 80s. He's he's got a few more years of joy. Yeah. I've got 23, 23 prescription bottles. <laughs> I don't do prescriptions, I do supplements. I wish supplements would work for me. But like I said. I had a 10% chance of surviving what I went through. I lived. I can't ask for anything more. I, I just look at it this. Anything past that date is like the bonus features on the Blu-ray, man. And hell, those are always pretty good. Now, not everybody... I'm not asking you to go through your entire HIPAA file. But just like a 30-second like just overview 
for those that don't know you that much. And I apologize. And, yeah, not a problem. I don't care. Uh, in 2020, I had a massive heart attack. I had to get a triple bypass on Valentine's Day, which is hilarious. Heart surgery on Valentine's Day. Um, and then, see, I don't remember anything from like February 12th to when I woke up two months later. Um, I got what they call C. diff. It's a intestinal infection. And it was, it turned into toxic megacolon. So my colon was killing me. So they put me in a coma and took out 97% of my colon. From that, I've developed stage three kidney disease, almost stage four now. And I've had to have um, five small intestine resections. So I really have no intestines. So my body does not absorb uh, electrolytes like they're supposed to. And it doesn't absorb fluids like it's supposed to. So I'm constantly having to drink water just to stay on the verge of dehydration. And, of course, it makes my kidneys work extra hard. So that's caused kidney disease. And kidney disease, when we found out that I had kidney disease, was beyond the point of where they could do anything about it. So my only option would be to get dialysis in the future, but that doesn't seem like a viable option for me. Okay. So that sucks. Yeah, it is what it is, man. Yeah. I mean, I don't complain about it. Like I said, when they had to put me in that coma, they had to rush me into emergency surgery at like two o'clock in the morning. Yeah, on a like a very low percent chance of me living through that. Um, they had to treat me and everything. Shit. So Would. like. Would a new so, kidney, would a new kidney resolve anything? Uh, the kidneys, they're just because I'm always dehydrated and like I, I misinformed. I did have to go to the hospital a couple of times since I got out of my last two weeks stay because I was dehydrated. At one time, my magnesium was extremely low, so I had to get an IV magnesium, and then I had to. The next time I was massively dehydrated, I had to get a couple of bags of IV fluid and potassium. And um, I've had to go in and get iron, IVs, magnesium, potassium all on the same day. Um, just, you know, it's my life. Would like a kidney transplant resolve anything? No, because I don't, my body doesn't have the um, opportunity or the ability to absorb liquids the way it should. Okay. So the kidney transplant would, if they gave me a kidney transplant, it would work for a few months and then it would start to get damaged again. So okay. it's not a viable option either. Okay. Okay. A lot of people has, have asked me, "Is like, dude, if you need a kidney, I give you a kidney." I was like, "Give it to somebody that will actually work for." You know. Yeah, it would basically it would work. Then it would get damaged. Then you have to keep getting new kidneys anyway. Okay. Yeah, and you know that could go to people that have such a better, you know, chance okay. of it actually doing something for them. My 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 big bother is I'm an organ donor, and there's not going to be a whole lot of organs that can be donated. I think they could take my skin if somebody wants some tattoos. <laughs> At least you've got a good attitude about it all. Yeah. Uh, it's like, what am I going to do? Set and whine about it? I mean... Well, there are people if I was on depressed. Being depressed about it wouldn't help anything. All it would do is make me miserable. Well, I mean, there are people on Twitter whining nonstop, and they don't have anything actually wrong in their lives. 
Yeah. So. And you know what? I am a believer in the Lord. Me and JC like this. I'm I'm secure on, you know, what's going to happen. I mean, I always say it doesn't hurt to believe because what's the worst that could happen? You know, there be no afterlife, then you have nothing to lose. But what if there is an afterlife? Then you got a lot to lose. Mr. Max Bluvin, you're right. It's not medicine. Yeah. Modern medicine is messed up. I've I've been through the ringer. I've been hung out to dry. I bought me a fast slow car the other day. I'm having fun. What type of car? Just a little Lexus. A little six cylinder. Great gas, super fast. Here, here, here uh, I am with my, my Honda Civic, and I'm trying not to get another ding in it. I live in San Antonio where people seem to, oh, it's a parked car. Let me back San into it. it. Yeah. I've been to San Antonio quite a bit. I love yeah, Texas. Well, yeah, well, well we, we got a, a hybrid van so we can cart all our kids around. So, yeah. Hmm. Hmm. I, I bought my ex-wife a van, a Dodge Caravan, So because my kids live with her. And they have a five-year-old little boy, and he's my buddy. And, you know, I hang out with him all the time. I live next door. So it's like they need a vehicle where, you know, they can take all the kids with them. So I got them a minivan. That's what we had to do. We had a, a little Kia that got good gas mileage, but two kids later, it's not big enough. <laughs> And the side grade into a van. I agree, uh, Max, about the modern medicine thing. A uh, wife, uh, she had an issue of sorts, and she was on you know prescribed medication. Then she went to something a diff- like a natural remedy, and it actually cleared up her problem pretty fast. So, I, I agree. Modern I've looked at. I've bullshit. been drinking. A, I've been taking the drinking a lot of the emergency because. A lot of my medications I have to take in liquid form because if it's a big pill, uh-huh. my body just won't digest it. It won't stay my system okay. quick enough. Yeah. Or long enough. It'll just run right through. Like I was taking a bunch of vitamins and I was just getting tired of flushing them down the toilet. So uh, gummy vitamins and like the emergency and stuff, I've been keeping myself dosed up with that. My issue is because my intestines are, well, so few. Um, like the last ten, the two weeks I was in the hospital last time, it was because I had a major intestinal infection. And if I don't watch what I eat, I'm prone to get blockages in my intestine. And Ooh. if those don't get taken care of, it could explode, which is a... And uh, sometimes if they can't fix the blockage, they have. That's why I've had like eight stomach surgeries, which those are rough because people don't realize how much they use their stomach just to get up, move around, and stuff. Well, your entire core is wired through there, so yeah, I I kind of get it. Yeah. Now, Bruce, I have a question for you. Go ahead. Did you really drink beer the other day with two eggs and some syrup or honey or whatever in it? Yeah. I've heard of people putting egg in their beer, but I've never actually seen it. In in the East Coast, that's called a breakfast. You get these guys that get off these night shifts and they go to their bar because it opens at 7 or it's been open all night. And they ask for breakfast and so they get their morning pilsner and they get an egg in the mug or in the glass. And I just thought I'd just drop two eggs in there. 
Max Boyven gets disgusted by it. He's like, that's nasty. Well, okay, you're not drinking it. I am. And you know what? I never taste it. How was it? And you never taste the egg. You never so taste the egg. If you drop an egg in beer, you don't taste it. You'll see it. You're you getting posting it. with your beer. Yeah, exactly. And I'm, I'm a guy eat. that... Go ahead. Go ahead, David. I used, to eat, I used to eat raw eggs when I was a kid. Yeah. A lot of us used to do that. I used to drink cow titty. I mean, I only had it straight out of the cow's tit once. Uh, after I after I recovered from that, I uh, I would put it in a bucket and then put it in my glass. Hey, Shadow. Hey, Shadow. Yeah, it, was, it would have to work at a Guinness. It would, yeah, it would work in a Guinness. When we were younger, what we used to do is we'd get egg, we'd get it, uh, we had this freaking shake thing, and we'd put milk, sugar, and egg in this, and just shake it up really, really good, and then drink that. <clears throat> and we drank that all the time when we were younger. I mean, David used to drink raw or used to eat raw eggs. And I mean, that if you used to work out, that was one of the things like your, your buddy in the gym would be like, hey, try this, have this. No, I, I just, a lot of boiled <laughs> eggs. No, I'd just be outside. We had, we had chickens when I was a kid and just, oh, egg, just crack it open, eat it, keep playing. <laughs> yeah, the, the Japanese put raw egg on their rice and say that it's just amazing. I haven't tried that. Raw egg on warm rice? No, I haven't tried that. They get like the beef bowl and crack a raw egg on it. And they're like, well, oh, it's so good. And I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I guess I try it when I go to Japan. I'll, I'll give it a shot. One of the things they do here in Texas, I'm not trying to sell anybody on a, a tour of Texas restaurants, but a lot of the local cafes and greasy spoons will serve you your hamburger with an over medium egg on top of the patty with a with a slice of cheese on it. We get a bacon, egg, and cheeseburger down here. Here in Florida, you get your cheeseburger with bacon and an over medium egg on it. Mm. So good. in Texas, let's say I've I've spent a lot of time in Texas. When I'm in Texas, I'm eating chorizo, or you know, yeah, Mexican sausage. Yeah, I get uh, it. Yeah, chorizo and egg burrito for breakfast every morning with refried beans. You can keep yeah. the beans, but yeah, I'll eat the rest. Green salsa. The green salsa is amazing. I love habanero salsa. Yes. But yeah, I, I spent a lot of time in Laredo because <laughs> I hauled um, lettuce out of Laredo up to Chicago, and then I'd jump over to Indiana and pick up like a load of Tyson pork or whatever, and take that back down to Laredo. When I was a trucker, I, I did that account for six, seven months. I was down on Laredo when it snowed that time a few years ago. <laughs> Those people didn't know what the hell was going on. I was laughing. Because I just come from Chicago, and you know there's snow in Chicago all the time. Yeah, that, that's what you expect in Chicago. Get chains on your tires. I never put chains on my truck tires. If it was bad enough that I needed chains, I didn't drive. Yeah, I just pull over. It's time It's time to stop. Yeah. Six Nation 31 Kings talks about putting raw egg in your OJ. I never had eggs in the OJ. I'm sure it would probably alter the taste a little bit. With the beer, it seems like the beer nullifies the taste of the raw egg. The Fat Gamer, uh, there's a saying. It sounds a lot cooler in Spanish, but... The Spanish say that a mill without beans isn't. <laughs> so, I mean, they eat beans with breakfast, lunch, and dinner. 
And a lot of the times the taco trucks that I go to to grab a breakfast burrito or tacos for lunch or whatever, a lot of times I got pesos back as change. Yeah. And I could use pesos to buy them. A lot of local food trucks do that because they're they're here during the week and they're back down south during the weekend. And uh, I just save all my pesos and give them to my kids when I came home to visit. They thought it was awesome. True. Quill egg on sushi. My old housemate freaked out, but it's not bad. That sounds oh, good. Oh, yeah. Quill egg sushi is really good. I go to a hot pot place, and they have quill eggs. It's You get your hot pot, and they have a conveyor belt. And they've got all the mushrooms all the mushrooms, king mushrooms. And it's like shrimp, you can get lamb, you can get just like everything for your hot pot. It's like 25 bucks a person, but you know, it's worth it. Um, and you can also pay like 30 bucks and get a hot pot and Korean barbecue. And they have quail eggs on the conveyor and I always grab a bunch of quail eggs and throw in my hot pot. David, are you really serious about doing a second edition soon? Uh, yes. Because I was kind of hoping you wouldn't. I was kind of hoping that you would just keep it what you've got, maybe tighten up some of the grammar and spelling errors, but that would be it. Uh, it, it's so when I, I, I was doing a, a a cowboy and Cthulhu game, and I didn't, you know, armor in a Western thing doesn't make a whole lot of sense. So I was trying to figure out how to make things work, and then I decided to give every class like a defense thing because D twenty modern did that as well. And then I thought, well, what if you do wear armor? What's that going to do? And in D twenty modern, I they did some kind of. I don't have D twenty modern anymore, but I remember there was some kind of weird way that you were supposed to mash the AC of armor war and plus your defense and get like a new value out of it. Yeah. And so I thought, well, I'll just make it so armor is damage reduction and then give guns high enough armor penetration. So if you have like a rifle, it'll essentially nullify most types of armor anyway. So you don't wear armor if you're going to fight like deep ones or, you know, Cthulhu monster type stuff. And then I thought, well, that's like a that makes a lot of sense. And I thought, well, could this work for a fantasy game? And then I thought of, well, what if everyone got a defense bonus? And then you put like on chainmail armor and that's damage redu reduction like five. But then I make it so if you if you hit a creature, the armor works. But if you roll really high, you hit a spot where the armor's not covering or you, you hit a weak point in the armor so you, you, you bypass the, the, the armor. Which Palladium Fantasy had a, a similar thing, but it was it was kind of static. It's yeah, armor value. Yeah, well, well, this one would be like if your defense is like fourteen and you're wearing chainmail, that's like an AC of five. So if something rolls to hit you, they get a fourteen to eighteen. The armor blocks part of the attack, but if they roll nineteen or higher, it's full damage. They 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 bypassed it, and that's when I was like, oh wow, I could just do this little simple thing and it all works. And from there, like it's, I started thinking of different ways to do things. And then I was like, oh, damn it. I don't want to, like, I, I could just do, keep it first edition and do stuff. And maybe I should just do that. But then I have to go back and reconvert things. Although I have a lot of things I want to do and I, if I do this, it'll take longer to get around to doing the things that I really want to do. But it's like I just I have these like weird ideas that I think are like way cooler. And I wanted yeah. to I wanted to show you, uh, especially to say like, you know, hey Bruce, are these better ideas or stupider ideas? And then if you like let, these all suck, then I'll just be like, screw it, I won't even do it anymore. I'll, I'll just let, take my let me let me get into the combat section and let me get into how your how your game really will differ for a lot of people because some people are familiar with like saga edition where you have wounds and vitality split up but 
you uh, if your game is different than that, I, I'm not opening your PDF really and looking ahead. Okay. It's it, and, and I and I'm not trying to delay it. I'm just trying to process it. And secondly, giving people like 20 minutes here, 20 minutes there on things, I think that's really the best way to go look at it if you're doing a deep dive because somebody's going to be like, oh, I'll just go through the whole playlist in one day. Do I really want this? But at the same time, if they if they decide that I, I just oh, want to look at this occasionally, I, I want them to be able to, to have bite-sized amounts. I think that would be that would be probably the way that if I was looking at a new game or a new system, I would be doing it. I would be looking at for like a half hour here, a half hour there. Uh, Shadow. Shadow. What's up, guys? Armor. Nice to meet you, David. I think we've talked before in a different thing, but I can't remember. But I actually am already sub to you. Who, me? Yeah, yeah. Really? I'm already sent your chat. I should. I awesome. better be. I don't because I, I see a pop up on my my YouTube thingy when I load it up. You're on the you're on the list cool, of stuff. Cool. Cool. Uh, for armor. I'm trying to hit that 500 by Christmas, guys. Well, I'm doing my part. Uh, for armor. <laughs> I hope uh, everybody had should Thanksgiving, not. By the way. The what? Hope everybody had an awesome Thanksgiving. Oh hell yeah. Can't complain about it, man. It was really good. Yeah. I had a lot of turkey. Yeah, no in laws. I made cheesecake. I still got half a pumpkin pie. Nice. Nice. Shadow, your armor thing. I don't think armor should make you slower. But it does. Do you own any? Not not really. I own no, but I I, plate mail. A uh, spanging helm, uh, metal arms and legs, uh, suicide plate, lamellar, uh, sig- lurka segmentata. I've worn pretty much all of it. And I was running around the ba- battlefield like a man. I used to play in the SCA a lot. So Yeah, so did we I. So did I. I, I, I so, we so, had some people from medieval times, some of the knights from med- medieval times come to our fighter practice. Right. And we had them. Let them wear some loner armor, and they're right. like, "You guys move just so fast." I was like, "Yeah," and I, I'd just stand over there and I'd like look across the field and I'd start saying, "Who's my bitch? Who's my bitch?" Well, I, it, it really depends on how how physically fit you are and how strong you are, but it does make you heavier, yes, yes. which makes you slower. I mean, if you if you think you know running I, around I, buck naked is the same as being armored, that, that's just not the case. I've got a I've got a, a plate carrier that's that's 25 pounds, and you know I'm not the strongest guy in the world, but it's a bitch doing anything with it on. But yeah, you know once you get used to it, etc. It's all conditioning. I I, no. I agree. Yeah, yeah. So 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 I would say that it it shouldn't make you slower. Inherently, it's are is your character strong enough to carry the weight? And if they're not, then you you get like an encumbrance thing. That's where it starts to slow you down. But right. if you're strong enough right, to, right. and then when you then start trying to carry anything. around, you know, treasure and shit like that, you know that that's, that that it all adds yeah, up. That's and there's only so much you can uh-huh. put on a guy. That's why our GIs only carry so much, which is a crap ton. Uh-huh. But after a certain point, if forget about it, your your effectiveness goes down. What you know, uh-huh. X amount, and and, 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 and armor should why... really, huh? Armor should what? I was going to say, oh, armor should really reduce the damage you take. Period. Yes, yes. I now, now, now. In, in, in our game, we have encumbrance set up where a typical fighter you can carry the the the, the starting armor you get plus gear. You. you if you, you're pretty strong, you can basically barely stop being impaired in some way. But once you throw your gear on, you're going to get slowed down a little bit. We have it set up that way where, where encumbrance matters. You have to watch out for that. Yeah, yeah. Because I agree it should do something. And also there's a, there's a, um, there's a uh, 
we tell you to, you, you know, the character's got to take rest breaks after combat and stuff. And if you don't, you got to make a check to avoid getting exhausted. So, you know, you can keep pushing okay. yourself. Uh, you might get tired and that'll make you less effective. So we, 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 I agree with all that stuff. And I was trying to figure out, I, I actually talked to Bruce about this. What's like the weight the average person can carry before they start getting bogged down? Because I, I wanted to, I wanted to do that. Like the typical guy, what could you carry before you're like, oh, now I'm going slower. Now I'm, you know, I'm going to get tired faster. Because I, I wanted well, that. The one game. thing people don't consider, another thing, excuse me, another thing people don't consider is your your uh, water intake. I, I do. I do. Um, the, well, that was never, you know, discussed in the old days, even in Palladium, et cetera. You know, after any decent workout, you you got to replenish your water and your salts and things like that. And if you don't, you know, you know, come dinner time, you're done. You know, you, yeah, you'll have pushed yourself too far. I mean, we, when I played SCA, we'd have water bears and we'd have people on the sides with pickles and pickle juice and oranges. So you'd run and you'd grab some water and you'd do a shot of pickle juice or eat a pickle or something like that. Just mm -hmm. to, re to replenish your salts because you really yep. need it. That is one thing, especially here in Florida, man. You sweat buckets when you're wearing that armor because you're wearing your padding, then you're wearing the armor over it. Mm -hmm. There's no bruise like a chainmail bruise if you're not wearing padding underneath that bad boy. Yeah, that, that yeah, yeah. Part, or, or a 12 gauge bruise. Yeah, that makes for an interesting bruise. You know. What up, James L? But yeah, um, with your conditioning, you can move in the armor a little bit better. I'm not saying that when I first started wearing armor, I could run around like a maniac in it. But after a month or so, so I look at it like you got an adventurer. Okay, say you're playing a dwarf and this is just a stout, nothing but muscle bastard. Because you got to think that the people, our d, &D characters are probably a lot better health wise than we are. Well, what what? better health than a 55 year old freaking stay at home dad? You're kidding me. No, say it ain't so. So it depends on know, the constitution score. Yeah. Oh, shit, then, I smoke a pack a day. I have no constitution. And then, and then they're wearing their armor and stuff all the time. So, yeah, yeah. they could probably do a little bit better fully armored than, you know, this 49 year old cripple. I, I'm I'm just gonna say that uh, atypically, like the Marine Corps and Army boot camps, they're a little bit different. But their main goal is to toughen up the infantrymen to get it, get them ready to carry stuff for long distances. And so, like for the Army, like I would say, you go in for eight weeks of intensive training and learning how to move, carry pack stuff and you're going to have a real world strength score of about 120 to about 12 to 13. So you can put about a hundred pounds or so above your head, maybe a little bit more. And a lot of people, they really get that shake going on whenever they get that, their, their arms, they, their elbow gets like a 60 degree bend in it and they've got it over their head. And they're, they're expected to carry 80 pounds to 100 pounds on them for a ruck yep. march. That, that's just your, your traveling gear. That's you, your happy boots, and you for 8 to 10 hours a day traveling 12 to 15 miles. And that's that's what they want you to do minimum. And this is today's Army, not 1990s Army, not the 1980s Army. This is the Army of today with a bunch of kids going in that have never really stressed in life, and they've never done much more than lose a battle in Clash of Clans, okay? And yeah. so the, these guys are a little bit weaker than than the, the ones before them. The, the kids that went in in the, the Global War on Terror were fucking animals. They were going in and reading up on a bunch of stuff, and they were being taught by guys from the first, world, first uh, Desert Storm invasion, and therefore... You had a bunch of preconceived ideas going into the, the war campaign, but these guys were going in fit and ready to go, 
And they also made sure that they had weights available, a lot of forward operating bases. So if you needed to work out, if you needed to get your strength up, you had a chance to go do, you know, push for 30 minutes to an hour. You weren't going to get any sleep anyway. Might as, go, might as well go work out. And yeah. that's what those guys would have to do. And I mean, David, I, I'm just going to say that I, I know this firsthand. I've, I've got video. I've got photo of this stuff from overseas, from myself and from other people. And it's just uh, it, it, it's the, the overseas deployed environment. Uh, Hungar might have involved himself in that as well. I don't know if he was in the, the war on terror before that, but not my there, brother was. They wouldn't accept me for medical reasons. Fair enough. Um, I tried. They uh, they toughen the kids up. Like when you go into to boot camp, not a lot of people can do twenty five or thirty push ups at a time. Not a lot. You'll have that one farm kid that's pretty tough, pretty strong, pretty tough. But these kids come out and they can actually do like fifty five or sixty push ups within a minute. Good form push ups. Uh, Jackie's uh, required to do a hundred uh, w- without stopping right now uh, in JROTC. Okay, and, part and- part of that's supposed to be officer training. Shadow, he's expected to be training to be going for officer training. So he's going to have to do more than regular enlisted. When my brother got home from boot camp the first time, me and him did push up for push up. I mean, I was ready, set, raring to go. I wanted to join the military. Um, James L., can you make STLs? Or cough, suggest someone send him send him some Christmas resin. Oh boy. Nice. Yeah, yeah. Speaking of, Hungar, when are you gonna send me that mini? I'm wanting to see if somebody can make an STL of it and I just print it out myself. All right. I got t shirts up now. I saw that. I saw that. Well, let, let me know if you need any, if you need any help. I can't do the 3D printing thing, but uh, uh, I would really like to paint two, one to have on my shelf back here and one to send back to you. Um, I mean, unless you want to paint them yourself and then just send me one, that's cool too. I don't But I got I got to have a little Hungar bobblehead back here. <laughs> you, know, that- you can get Hungar well, stickers, Hungar magnets. You can get Hungar uh Phone cases, mugs, travel mugs, T-shirts. Can we get a Hungar flamethrower? I wish. Dude. Just, just add, just, here's what you do. You, you go to Tesla, you get one of their flamethrowers, and you slap a Hungar sticker on it, you're good to go. Actually, there's another place you can get flamethrowers in the U.S. Um, I can't remember the name of the company, though, but they're pretty badass. A buddy, of mine owns a gun store. buddy of mine owns a gun store in North Dakota, and he has flamethrowers. Yeah, well, Mr. Max, that's what they used to have us do back in 93. We had a, we, a half second down, a half second up. That was our cadence. I will be back in a second, guys. I need a drink. Understandable. And we're going to, I guess, uh, Melissa just messaged me. We're going to put our six-month-old down, so I have to bounce. Hey, um, you have a good night, David. Thank you for showing up tonight and explaining to Shadow, uh, giving him a 30-second <laughs> field field speech about why your game is purchasable and should be higher sought than others out there. Because I'm not WotC. Um, uh, Bruce, uh, the encumbrance <laughs> table, you, 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 you Show that for a bit today. Um, if you think I should adjust those those weight amounts, let me know. You know, if you okay. think that it's too low or whatever, then I can uh, I can just adjust them because I don't actually know. You know what's too much, what's not. You know, are they are they anywhere close to reality or what? I have no idea. I just kind of went off like what they do in second edition, third edition, fifth edition. I felt was way too high, so I didn't do that one. Because have you seen the Pathfinder encumbrance table? No. Um, can you screenshot it in a in Discord yeah. it to me? Okay. Yeah, I will. Um, I'll take a look at a, a 
I'll give this to you later tonight because you know third edition Pathfinder, your 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 bonuses go up by two. So like twelve and thirteen are plus one, fourteen, fifteen plus two, sixteen, seventeen mm-hmm. plus three, etc. Yeah. But whenever you are getting lightly encumbered, you have a maximum of I think plus. No, you you don't have a, a maximum dexterity at light encumbrance or less. When you start getting medium encumbered. Your your max dexterity is for armor class purposes a plus three, and then when you start wearing really a lot of stuff on you and you're carrying things around, you probably shouldn't. Your maximum dexterity is a plus one. And I love that. We're negative one to everything, and then we're negative two to everything. You just get penalties to all your stuff because I thought that was easy and fast. So, and have to do any stack caps. Um, but I gotta go. So good to see you, Shadow. Good to see you, Hunger, for the first time. Hopefully not the last time. You too, man. Um, you too. Yeah. Good luck with the Bruce. With uh, your projects. Yeah. Go ahead, um, go ahead David. Uh, Bruce, uh, I think you should do more of these streams, more of these uh, Monday or whatever chill streams. Fair enough. It won't be on Mondays. This is me and Janet tonight to talk about movies and and kind okay. of beat back the blahs. But it'll probably be like we'll have to do something like on a Tuesday post Biggest Geekest stream or something because okay. they do a show from like six thirty to eight thirty typically. Yeah, yeah you can, there's so many people got to watch out for. I've got a I've got a Monday show coming up, and hey, we're only going to do it a couple of. At times a month, just because there's, you Too know, many so many other people doing stuff, and yeah. you know we try not to step on each other's toes, but you know it's it's there's not too easy. many things. There's too many things, so yeah. you gotta gotta go. Uh, uh, basic expert on right now. Yeah. What what's your channel? Say again. What's what's this channel? David Guile doesn't really have a channel yet. He's going to build one. Awesome. Oh, okay. Sub to me, uh, well, well, no, it's it's just it's it's inevitable. You already have the the infrastructure. You already have your Google account set up. It's just that you're you're going to put one together here at some point. Maybe not this year. Maybe not next year or into the year after. But you will soon. probably do it. Because, say again. But soon, someday. Yeah, yeah, and and it, it's just it's going to happen. Right now, uh, Hungar, he's on a lot of panel streams. Nice. And so, I mean, that's how he's getting his name out. Plus, you have guys out there like myself on, barking about this. I might be on a, the Biggest Seekers tomorrow where we're just going to talk about game design. Uh, Randy asked me, what, what would I want to talk about? And I said, well, adventure design, game design, you know, whatever Randy's working on. And Bruce, whatever you're working on, I want to I see that too. And, okay. and Hungar and, and Shadow, you guys are working on stuff. I'm cool looking it over to see, like, you know, look at it, ask questions, get clarification, you know, kind of, you know, give ideas maybe. Um, so if you guys are doing anything. Huh? Yeah, if I do anything, it, it will only be system agnostic world That's or fine. adventures. Right? There's not enough of that. And, you know, guys like me and, and a few others who have, you know, literally hundreds of games in our collection you know we we've got to you know look at what we're really going to actually have the time to play you know there's 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 so many different games out there and for something to catch my attention it, it's going to be about the world not the the mechanics you know cuz 9 times sure. out of 10 we're we're, we're just going to you know mod it ourselves anyways and I'm just I'm just a, a a professional guest on everybody's channel. I'm I'm just saying I'm just saying if you guys need an next pair of eyes on something, we're happy to take a look at it. Uh, so I'm doing with Randy. You know, sure. he sent me an adventure. I looked at it. I was like, well, what about the? I don't want to spoil anything. But it was like, well, what about this? I don't I don't I don't know about this. And he's like, oh oh okay. So he had to you know so. It, Things were, were were modified, so it was clear to me who you know if he's going to publish it, I need to know. You know, I, this is something. If if I he'd publish it, I'd be like, well, Randy, what about this and that? And so it's just getting some clarification, smoothing things out, getting some ideas going. So, 
Yeah, totally feel fine free doing to, that. Feel for free. free. To my channel, buddy. Sure. But I'm going to head out now. Bruce, send me that Pathfinder thingy, the table. I'll take a look yeah, at yeah, it. Yeah, I'll get you a table. Uh, it, it, okay. It's very easy, and I'll let you take a look okay. at it. And it, it, I know your system, it, your system thrives on plus ones and minus ones. And that's uh -huh. really a good thing, dude. I'm, okay. I'm trying to trying to not give you anything to where you would want to overcomplicate your game. If you want to, you can. It's your game completely. But well, uh, that's your second edition. I want to have people look at it. Am I am I overcomplicating it? And people think that's the dumbest thing ever. Then I won't do it. Fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. So. Because I, I, that's well, me and Melissa. So we 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 take criticism very well. We've changed a lot of things based off of people saying, "I don't get this. This is dumb. You need to change this. This is unclear." So we got no problem. People saying this mechanic is it's way more trouble than what it's worth. And then we just say, "Okay, we we take it out." So, um, but thanks for having me. Thanks for doing this. Uh, good to see you guys, and hopefully see you later. Nice take care, yourself, David. Thank later. you for showing up. Yep. Good luck. Okay, gladly one has a question. Well, for a mod, what would you say is the best format written module you have seen? What to take my head at? What I want to take my hand at setting one, and see what a solid format would look like. Um, I'll, I'll start with with uh, you, Hungar. Hungar, what is the best written module you've ever read? Like uh, D and D module. Any any game module, any uh, game. I'm not gonna keep force on the Borderlands. Anything. Which one? Keep on the Borderlands, man. Okay. Why do you say B two? Keep on the Borderlands. Uh, because you can do so much with it. You can run that from level one to level fifteen. Um, okay. It's got, and like you can modify it as much as you want. You can run Keep on the Borderlands multiple times for your players without them even realize that they're running B2. Okay. B2. Well, you it's have to just, change the names and things, but yeah. Yeah, it's just so versatile. It is. I, I'm not going to say it's not. It is a very <laughs> versatile um, very versatile uh, setting and adventure. I, I, it, it keep on a Borderlands. A lot of people say um, keep on the borderlands. I, I was thinking about B1, B2 for a moment, but I'm actually going to hit you guys with something different. What do you think there, uh, Shadow? White Rock Inn. Emperor's Choice for Arduin. Easily modifiable for just about any game system. It's, it's just like it sounds. It's an inn and the surrounding areas, and it's just got a crap ton of stuff above, below, and all the way around the inn. There's all kinds of crap going on. It's, uh, what is it? Uh, 108 pages. It's well written, well drawn out, nice, decent artwork. And if I didn't choose this one, I would choose White Plume Mountain. White Plume oh, Mountain. White Plume that's, Mountain. That's a good one. Uh, mm -hmm. My second pick would probably be the Temple of Elemental Evil. You know, I just went through that in Bloodworth's game, and it was boring as fuck. That's insane. Maybe, maybe he took stuff out or changed stuff, but it was a bunch of troglodytes, a dragon. Dude, there's, just, fire, there's fire elementals in that, water elementals, earth elementals. Oh, no, 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 no. Sorry, sorry. I think it was uh, Temple of the Reptile God. Sorry. Yeah, you, you, you're mistaken because Temple of Elemental Evil is all about yeah. elementals. And if you mess up and you make a wrong turn, you can go from a level one area to a level 12 area quick and like jump into a room full of freaking fire elementals that are getting ready to eat you. I mean, it can be a rough, rough adventure. You know, I you think I have that one, but I don't think I've ever read it. You got to do a little bit of gatekeeping on Temple of Elemental Evil. 
Um, Flady said for my Dean for DD, my brother said second edition Ravenloft was good, but third edition Red Hand of Doom. He thinks the keep on the Borderlands gets it. He agrees with, with Lord Hungar. I'm gonna say the Slumbering Czar saga is the best written adventure module I have read, Ooh. and I've read reviews on it since its release in 2012. Uh, Slumbering Czar Saga is a game that starts at 7th level and it ends at 20th. I've ran three tables through it up to about the last third of the map and there's always a TPK. Well, except for the last time. I ran actually four groups through it, three TPKs. My last group, they kind of got bored and they got tired of it because the module, it keeps ramping the difficulty up and they started like taking time off to craft. Well, the bad guys that are in it are not the type that just sit back. Oh, we're not being attacked. We'll just sit here inanimately and wait for wait for mobsters to come and try to roll our 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 city. No, they took over like a whole chunk of land. And because they were priests of Orcus, they just oh, grab those on grab those dead, grab that graveyard, raise them send them to said location, harass them. And they did maximum harassment and my party got tired of it and they quit. Some of them are still in my game today, but this was three years ago at no, two years ago, at the start of the coof bullshit. Is that the one the by uh, frog God games? Frog God games. Yes, sir. It's a pathfinder only module. So if you read pathfinder, and can port it down to a simpler system if you need to. Go ahead and do that. Yeah, you can get the PDF, link. but if you want the book, you're well. They got so it on. Um, yeah, frog. You can get hardcover PDF. PDF twenty bucks in stock on the Frog God Games page. You can get the PDF for twenty bucks. If you want the book, it's going to cost you about 170 bucks or more. The original Holy book cost $125. I could buy an army for that price. Okay. It's 900 pages. Now, about 100 yeah. pages is maps and such, but maps and bad guy stuff and everything, but it's really freaking good. Now, I will agree with this brother on the Ravenloft. I am a fan of that. Um, I'm a fan of horror games. First or second? Second. Okay. Yeah, I have almost everything for second edition. I had the first one too, but it's you know, it's like 18 pages of. Yeah. Do you, you have know. the Dwarf Splat book for second edition? Of course. That was the first book I ever bought. I, I think I have almost all the Splat books. Um, there might be a couple of the brown ones I'm missing. But and I didn't pick up any of the historical ones, but I have other than that, I've got about everything. The dwarf battle ranger was my jam for the longest time. Cool. But yeah, I'm gonna have to check out that PDF. Bruce, it's that my favorite module of all time. I I I've been running that since 2012 i we last ran it in 2020 and the, the group just kind of got tired and they were splitting up anyway because the covid was causing everybody to change their life and so it, it kind of ruined things the the coof did for me uh i had a few friends get really sick i almost died from the fucking thing oh hey hey i hate to interrupt but you just reminded me um dm bloodworth's got it right now let's all uh Say a silent prayer for him. He no. uh, he's quarantined at home, and you know he, he he's he's the same age as I am, and you know I'm sure he'll be just fine. Yeah. But you know we've already lost enough great people. We we don't need to lose one of our actual family. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's that's I completely understand that. So I'll honor that wish. Nothing, nothing but love for the Bloodworth. Yep. And that's not just because I want to be in his game tomorrow. If he needs a day off, I'm okay with that. 
I was coughing a storm up the first two weeks I had it, and then I got better. But I was in I the got hospital. The other one. Say again. Yeah, the Omicron, and I was in a nursing home for recovery because I just had two major stomach surgeries. Were you living in Florida or in uh, Florida or in uh, YouTube Florida. or in uh, New York at the time? Florida. But um, I had to do a lot of physical therapy, so they put me in a physical therapy place. And I had a roommate in there, which was horrible. I mean, the dude was cool, but he, you know, didn't have legs. So he had used the bed pen and his bed was five feet away from me. So when I got the Omicron, they put me in a room by myself to quarantine me. And that was great. Three weeks in a room by myself. I had my laptop. I was getting vapes delivered right to my window. That's pretty cool. Yeah. I, I, I was very lucky. I did not get it. Um, I did not get the shot. I went shopping. Every week, no mask. If they told me to mask, I told them to fuck off. And yeah. my, my wife got it. My wife got it, and neither my son nor I got it. And she was quarantined here. And I just thank my lucky stars because, you know, I'm a smoker and have COPD, and it could have been lights out, but the big guy upstairs has got plans for me, I guess. And uh, I, I just... My, my wife just came, came to me the other day and she's like, there's a new variant out. Oh my God, it's called the nightmare. And I just laughed my ever fucking ass off. I just... Yeah, I'm a pure blood. Pure blood. Yeah, I, I, yep. Yeah. Uh, same as my son and uh, it was just... You know, we did everything in the beginning, you know, because she's got lupus. We did all the washing the groceries when we brought them back, the mask, the gloves, all that shit for the first, like, you know, couple of weeks. And then I started doing my own research, like y'all should do. And I'm just like, oh, they're, they're doing this, are they? Okay, I'm done. Yeah. Well, I got out of the hospital. I, I woke up from a coma to a pandemic. And when they released me from the hospital because of the pandemic crap, I still had the C. diff in my system. Oh, wow. And uh, so I was back in the hospital for the uh, main hit of the COVID, and I never got any of it. And until, like, I didn't get COVID until last year, the Omicron. And that was a piece of cake. And I've never had a flu shot. I've never had a pneumonia shot. They keep on asking me, do you want to get these shots? I was like, no, I've never had flu. I've never had pneumonia. You know, if I get it, my body will build a resistance no to spaghetti, it. No spaghetti, James, you're killing me, man. I can only imagine what you could do with that stuff. Yeah, well, uh, hopefully, you know, uh, they won't try to pull that shit again this year. Um, Shut up. We need to do more videos together. We need to get you more subs, man. It kind of bums me out, but I'm passing you up a little bit. Yeah, well, you know what? Uh, the big guy upstairs has got plans for each of us, and apparently your pl his plan for you is to make me look like, like crap, busting my ass off and just watching you just... Uh, it's because I'm so damn pretty, man. I'm sorry. Uh, you want, I can't you argue with that. I can't argue with that. Pardon? All right. This picture right here? Yeah. That's one of my new T-shirt designs, but I cut the heads off of the people. Okay. <laughs> Justin Thor took my picture and put it on that and sent it to me. So I'm going to make that into a t-shirt. Yeah, the little guy's not too not too big on uh, self-promotion, you know. He, he's been watching YouTube since he was three years old, and thinks he knows everything and thinks it's cringe and 
crap like that. And I'm like, hey, bud. Yes? Just talking about you while you're in the shower, monkey. I, I don't want to suffer for a moment myself. I just want people wearing T-shirts with my face on it. I, I want my face on a dollar bill. That's I, not I, me. I'm happy, guy. I'm happy with a T-shirt. If I can get 15, 20 people wearing a T-shirt with me on it, you know, I I I I, I hit the big time. I'm like, hey yo, hey yo. I ordered one of the Hungar shirts for me and one for DM James. And <laughs> I swear, next time I go to the hospital, I am still wearing that shirt. Well, let's hope there isn't a next time. Uh, it's been pretty good. It's been almost, you know, it's been over a week. Yeah. yeah that's well, good. We, 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 as, soon as, as soon as everything calms down just a little bit, uh, we will start uh, doing those, those mid-morning streams, you and I. Uh, I just uh, the wife's home on vacation, so she's got honeydew lists. I didn't even get to do my regular, you know, Saturday. Monday through Friday. Yeah, where were you? Saturday. Saturday, I was here with Bruce for nine hours. Yeah, don't you do your show on Saturday? Oh, Saturday night. Yeah, I was here with Bruce. My my show spilled into his time slot. I didn't mean for that to happen. Uh, yeah, I, I, I wasn't going to leave. I was looking for the. I, I didn't get a notification. I always get your notifications. Yeah, no, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. You, you got a permanent spot at the table, man. Just I couldn't leave Bruce's game, and uh, my son was doing something, and I couldn't do. It. Oh yeah, he was at a reunion for his middle school, and I can't do the show without my 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 wingman, and and you know. Um, so I just said, you know what? It's the Thanksgiving thing. We'll just, you know, wait till next week. And, and I, you know, I, I kind of didn't have a, a topic. I mean, I mean, I know that never matters with us, but I wanted to come up with something. And uh, I, I, I think I got a topic for this Saturday. So you'll be there. We'll be there. We'll do the sci-fi thing because it's, it's, a, it's, you know, all these streams are so much fun, man. You know. Yeah, Six Nations says he he wants to rock a Hungar fan club t shirt. So me and Bruce both put the uh, dang near the same time. Bam. Yeah, everybody check out the link if you want to. Uh there's forty percent off right now, so they're running thirteen dollars. You don't want to pay thirteen dollars really? for send me, the, send me the link, send me the link uh in Discord and, and I'll, I'll see what I can do. Um I mean, I'm, I'm not making a whole lot of money off of them, and I don't want to make a whole lot of money off of them. I just think that's hilarious. Well, I mean, if you think about it, you know, like 20 years ago, you know, you'd, you'd literally have to run, I mean, uh, you know, print a crap ton of them out to get them, you know, just to get, get it done. You know, now it's like you want one, okay. Yeah. I'll set you the link in Discord, Shadow. I got awesome. it in the Table Breakers chat, Shadow. Oh, hey, check out what I got today in the mail from Max. Nice. Ooh. It's basically it's basically Council of Worms light for the, you know, the the uh, Bessem system. You know, you run a dragon and you, you beat each other up as dragons. Uh, but I'm going to wrap that and throw that under the tree because it's probably be one of the only things I get this year from, you know, the family. Well, my son always gets me something cool. Fat gamer, I always answer the fun uh, to numbers I don't know as Bob's Butt Plug Emporium. Yes, I said it, Jackie. I'm sorry. Now he was just wondering who, who how, how, uh, who I was chatting with. You see him there, sneaking around the corner. Say hey, Hunger. Hello. And Bruce. Hi. He just got hey, out of the shower. He's like, you know, being all modest and shit. I mean, he's covered head to toe, but he's like, you know. He's such a cool kid. Yes, he is. 
You got a good kid there, Shadow. You do, you're doing I good. Get me a billboard and put the Hunger of the Star variant picture on it. Justin, Thor- you know, I know a guy. No, I'm kidding. Um, hey, first time ever I had Justin Thor LPS on my live stream today. Who's that? Justin, I play um, Conan Exiles with him. He's a good kid from oh, Okay. Stand. He's in the chat. Hey, uh, are you running any background music there? Uh, my roommate's listening to the TV and he's deaf. He's 80 okay. years old. Uh, um, Dwayne Erickson. I am Hungar the Starvarian. I am DM James plays OSR's little brother. Um, I'm an avid gamer. My background... I'm just an old dying dude, man. You know, I, was doing the I, best I think I he's could. talking the wall. I think he's actually talking the wall behind you. Oh. You know, the oh, painting I, on your my wall? wall is painted with trees in my bedroom. Did you do that yourself? No, um, but it's awesome. Yeah, it is. I it's got that, it's got that whole. I had to trust the two rooms. I'm like, I'm going to sleep in the fourth. It's got that whole uh, where the wild things are thing going on. That's you know right. what I mean? Hey, the multi gun man. What's up, buddy? What's up, multi? I had to get back to you on that, that message. I'm getting ready to run a, a, an AD and D game, hopefully the beginning of the year. And I want to get a you know a nice diverse group of people who, uh, who uh, probably a mix. What's um, up, buddy? How you doing? <laughs> How do you feel about the high seas? What's up, buddy? How you doing? Okay, I guess I got I got a hunkar spot. I, that, that's I can cool. always I can play I can play the hell out of a swashbuckler. Cool. Hey, it's it's uh. Did you ever read um? The Earthsea Trilogy. No, but I will pick it up and check it out. Uh, it, one of the one of the three books sucks ass, but the other two are okay. Uh, but I, I like the feel of it. What would you think of uh, uh, Narnia? Love Narnia. Okay. And what did you think of Waterworld? You know, everybody, everybody bitches about, you know, oh, Kevin, but I'm a fan. Okay. I like Waterworld a lot. You'll, you'll enjoy. You'll enjoy. It's got all those things going on. Um, I want to do something that nobody else has ever done before. And you know me, uh, Adventures on the High Seas, that's like my middle name, practically. I, I just just freaking love it. And I, I always try to run games that I want to play in, even though I'm just the DM, you know. Uh, and, and if People like it, then we all win. I hate yeah, running DM's stuff. Not having it, fun. If the DM's not having fun, why is he running the game? If the DM's not having fun, nobody's having fun. Yeah. This is the way I, I do like it. What, what Justin says is like, I like the guy from China the other day just turned his back on Trudeau. <clears throat> that was good. Because Trudeau was saying something about how Canada, we are a peaceful nation. We are open to new ideas and we are open. We are open-minded, and freaking the, the little purse string holder, Chairman Z is like, yeah, you need to get with the rest of the world leaders and conform. <laughs> and of course, Justin's going to say Waterworld was a good movie, but it's no Blade Trinity, because if it's not Blade Trinity, Justin's not a fan. I don't know what that means. The movie Blade Trinity... The third, the third blade. blade movie. Oh, okay. Um, Isn't that the one with Ryan Reynolds? I don't know. Yeah, I only saw the first Blade. It was cool. I just never got around to it. Uh, but but you know, I I do like uh, I do like hunting vampires. So well, that Justin's puts me. Justin's a professional troll. Okay. He is a professional troll. He is awesome. He is my bro. Yeah, I'm not saying Waterworld is my favorite movie. Everybody knows it's not. It's uh, The Watchmen. So, there. 
Casablanca. That's a good one. That's a good one. But get you know, uh, I just got my son to watch uh, Invasion of the Body Snatchers, and we watched The Day the Earth Stood Still, and he's kind of a fan of Twilight Zone, and he really likes you know war stuff. So my unopened copy of Casablanca, it's just a matter of time. But I tell you, man, it, it, it's like pulling teeth around here to be able to actually be able to sit down and watch a two hour freaking movie once a week. It's just the Watchmen, I love the movie, but I have the comic books too. Mm-hmm. And Me too. I love the comics. You know, uh I like the movie better. Um the, the comics are great because there's a whole lot of stuff that's not in it. But I mean, when you throw in the music, the great actors, for the most part. Um, see, I did when I was a kid. I worked at a comic book store when The Watchmen came out. I worked there, and I could not get copies. It was just, it just, it was too hot for the people at the store to get them. We only got a limited number, and it took me until about f- five, eight years ago before I could just get the freaking trade paperback. Which was, you know, it's like, okay, I'm grabbing. Read it, loved it, watched the movie, and I'm like, the one thing they changed, I think, was better. And I think, uh, I think I read somewhere that uh, that uh, Alan Moore liked the way they ended it better as well. You know, that I, one thing. Don't get me wrong, I love the Watchmen movie. I think it's great. It's like everybody's like, there's no rated R. Uh, you know comic book movie, I was like, you've not seen The Watchmen before Deadpool? I'm like, you've not seen The Watchmen? I'm going to bring up a movie, though, that they're doing Constantine 2. Okay. I love Constantine. I have I have the original I uh, got number one through number like 30 or 40 or something, and then you know, I got out of the comic book business and stopped getting them. Uh, yeah, I love Keanu. Yeah, Keanu Reeves is coming back for constant. They asked him on the talk show if they, he could do a sequel to any movie he's made. Which one would he want to do? And he's like, I would love to do Constantine. And the, yeah, Hellblazer and- was was one of my favorites for a good long time. Yeah. Uh, I just I. I you know, I had to get out of the comic book business. It was just, dude, I was getting like a hundred comic books a, a month, and it just—I didn't have time to do anything else but read. I wish that was the way it is now, um, but I just—I've got a pretty massive collection, and I—I I stopped. Uh, did you ever read X Men? Yeah. Remember when the X Men went to? They did that alternate universe X Men, where everybody was different and like, you know, it was like the whole year or more. Do you remember that? That's when I stopped. Yeah, my that my year. big my big three were uh, the Spider Man comics, the Hulk, and Aquaman, and uh, Lobo. I, I collected all of the Lobo comic books, and I've got same all here, of- same here. I've got all of the tick. I am the tick. You know, I, I I made the huge mistake of selling my tick collection way back when it was like worth a crap ton of money, and now I can get it pretty cheap. And you know, so I made I made money, you know, but I I, I just haven't had the time to just like go scrounge them up. I've got like I got about ten of the issues, uh, but I don't have like the first five or first four. And that comic book was the funniest thing I've ever read, ever. Yeah, um, I got one through ten, or one through twelve, first printing, and um, Poison Elves, Preacher, Sandman. I was a big fan of the Sandman. I've got a number one Sandman, and I've got the first ten or twelve. My ex girlfriend loved that comic book, um, so I got them, uh, but I kept them. Uh, my favorite was probably I don't know man I, I got a lot of Batman comic books that would say you know would lead one to believe that that was the case 
Um, Batman was always a good read. So was Nightwing. Mm-hmm. Some of the Robins were good too. Uh, Doom 2099 comes to mind though. And of course, Moon Knight. Was, Doom was my favorite Marvel character. And Moon Knight was my favorite superhero. I'd like to say hello uh, to two of my friends coming in here. And I know we're doing a, a different stream for Monday, but Janet's sick. Deej Odyssey and Tommy and the Guinea Pig Collective. Gentlemen, welcome in. Welcome, guys. What the hell? I didn't mean to interrupt. Why don't you we just took over your screen, Bruce. Say again. Yeah, we're not trying to we take over your screen, screen, buddy. Hey, you're good. You're good. Uh, I am going to throw the link out in the chat. If we have some chatters that want to jump on the panel and talk, I'll go for another 20, 30 minutes, maybe. Oh, I am shit, it's after 8. Yeah, we you usually you usually finish at, what, like 7.30? Yeah, but that's also when I have Janet and I'm trying to be nice to the algorithm. Uh, I've said some nasty no-no words tonight, and I'm like, oh, fuck it. Justin's favorite comic book was Playboy, he says. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that was a good I, one when I was younger. Yeah, I definitely, I definitely read my share of of Cherry Pop Tart, Wicked Wanda, and what was the other one? I don't know if those were Playboy or Penthouse. My dad had all that shit back in the day. DJ, what's up, buddy? I'm all down for naughty words. Boobs. Boobs. <laughs> Boobs. I don't really okay. consider that a naughty word. I know, yeah, but yeah, I, yeah. I, I, try, I try to be good on Bruce's streams. You, you ever seen one of mine? They go completely off the rails, and I'm surprised I'm not banned yet. Well, you do have one of my favorite people. Uh, you've, you've got this lady named Givette, who's just a she's a who. Hey, Warzel. What's up, you crazy bastards? <laughs> How's it going, man? Good to see you again, man. I know it's only been a day, but a man that yeah, never feels, feels like an eternity. <laughs> rolling him up a smoke. Yeah, of plus, course, man. Plus, plus Bruce after. <laughs> How is it down in the land of make believe? Oh, it's great, man. It's a beautiful day. Sunny. If you guys didn't you know, touch that, not here. The birds are singing. Uh, you know, they consider us cattle according to the Talmud. Uh, the air is fresh. I'm, I'm joking. Spiders I'm are joking. jumping. Dude, I made a big spider very angry the other day by spraying it. Like, Good night, lady. Night, lady. It's just basically got its own room now, and I'm paying it red. Like, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> I don't know how I ended up in this arrangement. <laughs> Only in Australia. But, uh, I mean, I won't be here long. I gotta go out and get some like milk and cigarettes for it, you know. Like. Yeah. <laughs> Only in Australia, where you rent the room from the spider. Yeah, yeah. Somehow I've been subverted, but uh, you know, it happens. Have you found any snakes in your toilet yet? No, but uh, my dog killed one once. Which was pretty badass. He was a really dumb dog, and he was always creating trouble, getting out and rooting all the other dogs in the neighborhood. Um, so when he actually like earned his keep by killing a very poisonous uh, brown snake, then I was very pleased. I was like, "Oh, you're you're good for something, right?" <laughs> and he just looked at me with that stupid spaniel look on his face and said, "I." There are no truffles here. What, what, what am I here for? So uh, 3D you know, printing. Uh, 3D printing is taking off in our community. Shadow, guess who just got a 3D printer? I'm guessing you did. No, I didn't get one. Mr. Mr. GM, Mr. GM Fritz has one on the way. I can't... I, I'm... I come from a manufacturing background and my spine is so screwed that if I get into that, I'm just going to, like, even painting kind of throws me off a bit. So um, I assisted him in acquiring one and I think it would be really nice if various people sent him, like, a bottle of resin, a bottle of IPA, 
a spatula, that kind of thing, get him up and running. Because I know GM Fritz, and I know he will print stuff for you. <laughs> hey, yeah, I'm I, 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 I'm 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 all I'm all in on that. Uh, just yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I've got yeah. a, a, a a filament printer that I haven't done shit with, and I need mm-hmm. to. But you, you know, I mean. I'm, if I'm I get so my surgery, stuff. if I get my back surgery, like I'll probably get into it. But for now, he's my guinea pig, if that makes sense. And I can still get prints. Hey, hey you know what? You, you've donated enough to his channel to, to where where you know you should have carte blanche. Well, I'm not a. I'm not normally the kind of guy who like gives a lot to different streams, but his is like one exception. You know what I mean? Because I think he sets a good Absolutely. tone. He kind of brings yeah, your focus away from the there, drama. But... Yeah, he gets you to focus on the painting. That's, that's, our, that's our thing. Yeah, yeah. He gets too popular. I know. I know, Deej. Where the hell did you come from? I know, Deej. <laughs> you were just over on and, Salty and, Trekker stream talking. That's why I come over here for peace. Because and of quiet, Deej, it. I know Bruce. So <laughs> there. That's. That's my connection. <laughs> I don't know any of you bastards. Well, at least you, you knew right away I was a bastard. We so. could spot our own. <laughs> but yeah, man, it would, be, myself, it would be cool uh, if we it would be cool if we helped tool him up over time so that he can, you know, do an army in a day kind of thing. I think it would be great. Because those commission painters, they've kind of got to get into this printing stuff. To, you know, to keep it keep it going, really keep a competitive I know, edge. I know, DMJ dude. I, I've been LSI. following Bruce for like a year. I just never came on his panel ever. <laughs> so, <laughs> hey, you CCTV. How you doing, sir? Oh, hi. Yeah, I'm Mr. CCTV. I do cooking videos. No, <laughs> you're the drunken philosopher. I am also the drunken philosopher, yes. <laughs> if I could remember what I'm supposed to be talking about. <laughs> I'm just making the rounds before I get canceled from YouTube. <laughs> well, if any of you guys want to sub to my channel, go right ahead. There's nothing nature couldn't teach you about the raising of the wrist. Socrates himself. <laughs> Was permanently pissed. Oh, it's Man, that's that's our that's our that's our resident drive-by sniper, the the one the only the James L. It's there's a, link, there's a link to my t-shirts. There's a link to my YouTube channel. Check me out if you want to. Okay, I, I'm subbed, and you'll shortly pass me in subscribers. Congrats. I don't understand why Deej is is not. So, like, why are you not monetized? <laughs> because I keep losing them. I lost, like, nine subscribers this week alone. Deej, what's your link, bro? Uh, just look at, look up the name in the chat of me, Deej Odyssey. I, I got him. I got him. Pink bunny weirdo. Yeah, yeah. Send, send me the link to both you guys. Um, uh, I'll, I'll gladly, you know, hit you guys with a, with a sub. <laughs> I, I, just, I, I just can't let I just can't let my son, you know, probably yeah, don't, watch, don't you know, let your son here. watch my live streams. <laughs> oh. Don't let your son watch my live streams. It, it, it's not a matter of him letting his son see the live streams. If you have a discussion involving women's breasts or women of culture, um, he'll probably just bail out anyway. He'll probably just like, oh, let me get back to. Back to politics. The, this politics, politics. Stuff. Well, yeah. well, well, see, mine just goes everywhere. It'll go from politics to boobs to nerd stuff, and it well, never that's stays the on problem. Topic. There's your problem. Well, I've, <laughs> I've said to Deej, I, I can never keep any. Put your link up, buddy. Yeah, but well, my son, I don't know if you guys know who I am, but my son and I, we do kind of a, a family friendly channel for the most part. Um, Monday through Friday, and then on the weekends, we get pretty crazy. 
No, no, Tommy, you, you got to understand tonight I opened a can of worms and I think I've gotten into a fight with geeks and gamers. That's why I could be canceled. <laughs> ah, fuck them if they can't take a joke. You know, they, they don't like to me, They can't. Nobody can take a joke anymore except guys like us. Well, somehow I did, I never get invited to the Dick's division. <laughs> you, you need they they invite. never invite me either. But that might have been because I was going in trolling them as Ray Epps for a while. You know, culture, culture thought it was funny. I just like yeah, to be uh, fun. Good luck with that. Uh, that son of a bitch needs to be uh, dealt with. Uh, I know he does, but you know they're in there talking this. I come in Ray Epps and act like I'm getting away with everything, and it just like spazzes them out, and it's funny because. I have nothing else to do at that point. They ignore me if I come in as my normal self. Yeah, uh, it's pretty amazing, you know, how far we've we've fallen from humor in the last couple of years. I choose not to make dad jokes. Why? I I have no choice. It, it literally is genetic. Once you are a dad, I found that I just cannot avoid it. But exactly, yes. But once you know, uh, my son and I, we do a live stream on on Saturday with Hungar and and various other people. And you know, like I said, on the weekends we cut loose. You know, he is fourteen. You know, he started with the channel when he was twelve, so he's he's grown. And, you know, he's, he's, he's now, he's basically, you know, an adult as far as I'm concerned, you know. Uh, he, he's he's in JROTC and kicking ass, taking names, and, uh, right you know. He, he can have, That's he can what I love to hear. That's what I love to hear. There's not a lot of people going on to JROTC. No, so he's, yeah, a, he's a great kid. He, if you he, haven't uh, met him, you'll see he's, he's fucking amazing. There are a lot of people out there who do not know what JRTC is. Uh, will you explain it? It's basically uh, a pre-Air Force for high school kids that, you know, aren't blatant, you know, or just aren't out-and-out out pussy. They're, they're, you know, go-getting young men and women that, that want to do something to, to give back to the community. Every every chance he gets, he's doing volunteer work with uh, the veterans, and he just uh, did a thing with the uh, the Vietnam uh, Memorial Wall that's traveling through our great country. And every chance he gets, he is, you know, just doing the right thing. It's not just Air uh, uh, Air Force ROTC though; it's Army, right. Marines, Navy. The ROTC is, uh, uh, well, it, it, it's kind of like a training ground or a proving ground for middle schoolers or high schoolers to go and spend their weekends or a, a day a week with, and they kind of get, they, they get a little bit of the culture. I, I, if, I did they play, further, they can. I did play the sergeant for a lot of the young soldiers, uh, young officers who came into the army. Uh, they came from West Point or they came from ROTC. And honestly, the West Point graduates were awful. Uh, the, uh, the, the, the graduates from regular colleges were better than the officers who came from West Point. So I've heard that a lot. I trained wow. them both. I I and if they took my advice, they were great. And if they didn't, well, they were from West Point. <laughs> yeah, I heard that a lot from the uh, people from dealing with West Point grads and grads from Citadel. That yeah, our, our West Point's usually from more affluent families to begin with. Usually, 
Exactly. I, I yeah. actually had an opportunity to go to West Point, and I chose to be enlisted instead. But that was a choice I made because I couldn't do uh, math. <laughs> Oh no, this kid can do math. Um he he's he's too smart for his own good. But guys, it is past my bedtime and I don't want to pull a Bruce and fall asleep on stream. Hey, hey, hey. I, I it's not a real stream unless Bruce falls asleep on stream. <laughs> yeah. But thanks for having me on, guys. Check out my channel. I am on guard the star variant. You know, I'll see you tomorrow, man. Yeah, see you tomorrow, guys. Good to meet uh, you. Take care. Nice to meet y'all, and have nice a nice to meet you. With with right that on. being said, I probably need to start wrapping this up because I do need to work in the morning. And as much as I'd rather hang out and paint all night, I I love this and I like having the chat and chatter. We've got some great people in the chat. I have some wonderful guys in the the panel. Um, I do need to to start getting ready for for bed, and I don't want to, but um, go ahead and Mr. CCDV. Will you do me a favor and just give us like a, a elevator pitch of what your channel is and just really what you're about, sir? Well, I did spend 18 years in the army. And so I will say I sure. am a veteran. I am a veteran of four deployments uh, from Bosnia through Iraq. Uh, however, my favorite thing is to do is cook. And so my cooking videos is what I think of myself as now. Okay. Uh, um, so people... my latest video was uh, 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 the, oh. what did I do last, Deej? Oh, was, I don't uh, know. I've been stuck out in the fields all fall. I didn't know what the something hell was going from on. Louisiana. <laughs> you doing Cajun dishes now? Awesome. I do Cajun dishes. I do French dishes. I do whatever. Yeah. You're okay. supposed to be doing a dishwasher soup <laughs> video at some point. <laughs> I'm still not sure if I want to do a, a, a comedy video on doing dishwasher soup because <laughs> a lot of people think. The dishwasher soup is a thing. <laughs> I'm wondering if I can do that. I'm I'm trying to figure it out in my head. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna get his link in the chat. That way we have everybody here and you guys have an opportunity to see Mr. CCDV. Uh Mr. CCDV, whenever uh I, I do have to ask, whenever you are doing your thing. Do you recommend that people will wear their reflective safety belt whenever they watch your videos? <laughs> no, it's more like a Gallagher well, thing. you got to have plastic. Since I do cook with uh, wood and I do cook with gas, I do recommend that people wear their safety goggles. <laughs> okay. Fair enough. Uh, Mr. D. Jalvesy, you're you're from my uh, my old my old homeland of of Illinois, and uh, you're you're quite an accomplished farmer. What is exactly your? your I, I know you're trying to get you know more subscribers and such. Thirty seconds, or what? What's your elevator pitch for your channel, sir? Uh, my channel is basically either farm life videos where I'm doing things out on the farm, like the fall picking this fall. Um, live streams we do game nights uh we just have open panels where we sit up and talk about anything and everything as long as it's not going to get us banned and um i also appear on another channel over on han stars doing name that tune where we do the old classic game show name that tune and we have contestants trying to see who can be the best at picking music i got one point <laughs> sweet mr shadow and son would you like to introduce yourself? If I know you're, you're quite a regular around here, but uh, if we could have the elevator pitch for the Shadow and Sun server, I'll get the link in chat. Uh, that's right. Uh, my son and I were, were gamers of all denominations. We play a whole lot of different 
you know, tabletop, war games, board games. Uh, no card games yet, but I'm working on getting him to play some Doom Trooper. And uh, I'll just do the beard because my mustache doesn't do it. Um, but we're, you know, we're, you know, Monday through Friday, we're a wholesome father and son channel. We do crafts. We do painting. We do reviews. And, uh, you know, we, we do a little, uh, little bit of everything in the gaming community. And uh, hopefully you guys will enjoy what you see. And, uh, you know, you're always welcome to, you know, uh, come hang out with us on the weekend. We do a bunch of live streams and things like that as well. And uh, again, it was nice meeting you guys. Uh, and any friend of Bruce is a friend of mine. But that's us now, in a nutshell. Isn't it crazy that our beards go the wrong way? <laughs> it's like we want our beards to go down, right? Yep. And they but always curl. <laughs> they always <Yeah>. curl. <laughs> you got to keep pulling it, man. You got to keep pulling it. Um, I think it's because we sleep. So it gets eight hours of being pushed like this. But yeah. You know, yeah then I got always, like a little bow always. on it. Got to tie a little bow down here or something. You know, like a Yorkie, you know, and kind of tease it up or something. I don't know. <laughs> exactly. It's like, I want to go to the bar tonight. I want to go to the bar tonight. I want to go to the bar tonight. Damn you, I want to go to the bar tonight. <laughs> there you go. All right, a little bit of white bat audio on our way out the door here, and uh, wanted to say thank you for everybody for showing up tonight. This Pleasure. has been a fantastic stream. Uh, it was just improv. Uh, Janet, she was ill. I wanted to, to give a chance for my Take friends care, to have. It. Yeah, I wanted to get well. We'll be back next week to talk about wild hogs, and uh, I'm looking forward to seeing. Everybody, if I can, uh, I'm going to try to jump in other streams this week. I, I promise I will. And uh, I'm I'm trying to see if I can get closure on one of my playlists. So we'll be doing that. But look forward to some work we've got in the future. And I look forward to chatting with each and every one of you. We'll be here for Thursday night table breakers. And uh, if you need anything, just get in touch with me via Discord or Gilded. Uh, I've got links and servers there. Everyone. Please be well. Please be healthy. 3,000 milligrams of vitamin C a day, some airborne and some zinc. Uh, that's not Bruce from being a doctor telling you that. That's just some things common sense. You find them over at CVS. I wish you all a great night, and we will see you later.